Flow Chat. We're getting started up here real soon. Talking about any unreleased video. Now they can. Now they can hear you. Uh, I had you guys muted while you guys were talking about unreleased video games. (laughs) What could it be? (laughs) Uh, Okay, Mm -hmm. that's good. Mike, is your camera on? No, because I forgot. Excuse me. That's good. Uh, I'm at. Excuse me. Ubisoft. Oh my God. Mike, you hit that 10% no. already? What the hell is going on? Don't start already. No, this, Don't start no, already. Like a 4%. Oh, uh, okay, okay. There is beer, but it's not strong. Oh, yeah, I got one, too. Ever since I got shamed out drinking milk with my dinner, I've been, you know, having <laughs> beer with my burgers. You don't have to say it like that, like we're the bad guys. <laughs> Look, you're like, you're, like or you're the bad guy for drinking milk. Let's be clear oh, wow. here. Wow, you brought back the Game Boy Advance one, uh, the, the Final Fantasy Advance one. I like it. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, we should bring back some of the old ones. Yeah, it's been a minute. Shut up, Nikki. <laughs> you deserve that shame. Get out of here with that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, this okay, one okay, has yeah. the old typo of enjoy back. I yeah, love it. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. The classic. Electronic oh, yeah. joy for your gaming. Okay. One of us, if you uh, did, like, send in, send in a corrected version of that, and I lost them. So. Cool. Yeah. Yep. This one has character. Yeah, exactly. We still have to get the uh, Resident Evil one. Yeah. Yep, I'll, I'll take care of that at some point. Nikki, uh-huh. both chocolate and strawberry milk are very good, but I love strawberry milk. That's it's, like it's yeah. right. an irrational love. I know that that one's weird, but yeah, I really. I, like I think that. that's the only one that I would like. The other, I don't like milk, but I could drink it if I had to. If I had to drink strawberry milk, I think I'd be upset about it. <laughs> I would not be. Pleased. I just like straw. I like especially I like, like the artificial strawberry flavor. I, don't, I know it's Shh. yeah, that's I know, a weird I one, it. but yeah. Um, oh, we got a thing from Bop tonight. We got a uh, okay. little fancy correct thing. Oh, okay, we can, cool. Uh, update people on. Okay, I like it. And get this is not in sale. Let me check this later. Man. Video games. We're doing 2015 video games, everybody. Also, so much fun we're gonna have today. How the fuck is Bloodborne almost a 10 year old game? That feels weird. I think Man, that's I, the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in terms of a game being 10 years old. I, I just scrolled past a tweet that was like, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is like 25 years old. I'm like, that just doesn't feel mm-hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. Like Pokemon, sure, but go- Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know. Okay. I think I am set up over here, I believe. Have you tweeted, yes, sir? I yes. just tweeted. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Let's test the music. And by that, I mean I gotta turn that off, this up, and then let's get it up here on the stream deck. You guys hear that? I heard it. Yeah. All right. Looking I was good. scared for a second. I was like, "Whoa!" He did the countdown. You're still recording. Fuck. Nope. We're all good there. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's do it. You ready, Mike? Uh, yes, sir. Do this. All right, I am gonna count us in and get us started. I've and been waiting for this. Five. Gross. Four. Three. Internet, you're busy. Let's do this. Welcome to the Game Mess Decides podcast. This is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of video games so you never have to think for yourself. I'm your host, Jeff Grubb, and with me is Mike Minotti. Could you tell how close I was to saying my name was Mike Minotti that time? <laughs> I did not tell that. Real that close. Great, really, really close. Uh, Mike, how's it going? Wait, wait, today's episode, a podcast about a podcast. All right. Mike, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, we got a long weekend coming up here very soon. Yeah, we do. I know I'm going to be spending it. I got <laughs> this new Mega Man 3 Robot Master shirt that I'm very excited about. Uh, yeah, everything's everything's great. Nothing's yeah. wrong. Everything's going pretty good. Uh, 
Tell you what, that, uh, that, hey, you never have to think for yourself. If you've been listening to our podcast and like Game Mess Mornings for the last two weeks, you basically already know everything that they said in that Xbox thing where it was like all of their thinking, all their reasoning, like we went over it back and forth. And it's all the stuff they've been saying for years, but boy, do they just lay it out there like, yeah, hey, console isn't growing and we would either charge you more money for everything or find other ways to do it. And that explains all the things that we're doing. It's just the conversation we've been having here for a long time. So, uh, yeah, we'll get into all of that here pretty soon. But, yeah, I'm, Mike, I'm also looking forward to the long weekend. Uh, still playing a lot of games. I am, like, making the conscious choice here to take Bellatro and put it over there so that I don't <laughs> only play that because uh, that could be a real problem. I, yeah, go ahead. I did start Bellatro. I did one run, like, yeah. my tutorial run, basically, and I get it. Yes. It's very fun. It's just it's, – it makes a lot of sense. It's very fun, and they – uh, they don't beat around the bush. The tutorial itself is, not, itself is not even very long. It's like they do at a certain point. They're like, no, you basically get it. Just go. It's basically the game, it seems like, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you just, you just go. It's great. I um, like video games with Arcana cards I'm learning. Playing that and then playing Persona. Like, in real life, I hate that shit because people seem to actually believe it and I get mad. But in video games where it's just all flavor, yeah, that's fun. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so playing a lot of games this weekend. Got to p- play some review games for sure, but try to get a little bit further on Like a Dragon as well. Uh, I'm also, I, I was like thinking about the Switch a lot because I did put Bellatro on there. And um, I'm like, man, I think I'm ready to like go back and play some of these older Switch games I played before and like have a good time with the system because I, I feel like I'm wrapping up, wrapping up our time with it. I'm yeah. like, re- I'm ready to be nostalgic about it. It's weird that we're there. It's yeah. very weird that we're there. Uh, I guess, I mean, the Switch has been around so long now. It's been such a dominant force in the way I've been playing video games. Um, I, 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 I'm i I'm close there, Jeff. I think I'm going to feel more like that once we really do hear about the Switch 2. And I really do feel like, yeah, there's not going to be any more like giant games. Like Princess Peach might be the last really big original game, maybe. But there'll be these remasters and ports and... I'm looking forward to some of those a lot, uh, like Thousand Year Door. But yeah, like I, I get what you're saying. I did um, also, I was like going through some old like contacts and sources um, where I was like, where where did I get, like, why was I so kind of like, hmm, Metroid probably this year? Um, and it was someone mentioned. Why were you like that? <laughs> well, because I, I found it. Um, and it was uh, a, a source that actually got a lot of other stuff right. And we'll, we'll still see about this. That And this stuff could have changed. Obviously, it's Nintendo. Um, we'll talk about that, too, I guess. Um, uh, they mentioned, hey, that they're trying to get something put together for a big Metroid marketing campaign that probably would drop around May of 2024. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, hey, that's probably not going to pan out necessarily because this this new this little tidbit I got was is very old now. Uh, and things have probably changed since then. But... Back then, things that never seemed, change. Yes, yeah. Then, well, things never. We we do know that that nothing's ever changed inside of video game companies. Uh, you know what? Thanks for joining us. You can get more from Mike and me at, at uh, our Discord at GameMess.net. Ooh, GameMess.net. Give us a good rating wherever you are listening and hit that like button on YouTube. It helps people find the show. If you want to ask a question, you can drop a chat. Uh, super chat during the show. We'll a- answer all those before the end of the program. Thank you to Carlos Ayin, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube for the use of our theme songs. Thanks to one up versus CPU for our artwork. You can find more of him over at one up versus CPU.com. Uh, we are on Spotify, Apple podcast and wherever pods are caught. And thank you to the mods. And you can also support us by going to patreon.com slash game. Uh, that gets you access to the private channels in our discord, the monthly Q and a participation in our monthly game club discussions, one month early access to new, new episodes of Game Mess Jeopardy and Columbros. New episodes uh, is going up of, of that. Is it is that up actually? I think that's up now, right? It, that's up. That's up already. That's and up. Good job. Another one next week. Yes, maybe. we'll have another one. We'll, we'll probably we should be able to make that happen. Last episode's about an exploding cigar, everybody. Yeah, you actually don't want to miss it. It's a good time. Uh, and of course, all of our shows ad free. Uh, so patreon.com slash game mess. Uh, or you know, membership here on YouTube. That's good too. Uh, all right, Mike, big news this week, big news today. You ready to get into it? Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's actually start with the, with the direct stuff. Uh, oh. you know, yeah, just r- real quick. Cause it's like, uh, I heard earlier this week, like I said, on Nintendo dogs that it would maybe get moved around. It was something they were at least discussing. I don't know what they ever ended up deciding. seems like maybe they moved around, but, but who knows? I never knew the date of when this direct would happen. I only ever heard last month it would happen sometime in the middle of February. 
Um, it feels like, hey, we're dead in the middle of February. Maybe it should happen right now. It didn't. Uh, and then it kind of, that kind of lines up with them maybe wanting to get out of the way of this Xbox thing for whatever reason. I don't know, but um, it's Nintendo. They change things all the time. We'll see. I, I mean, listen, I, I, I continue to hear like, oh, there's stuff. There's a direct and there's stuff in it. And um, uh, so, like some of those games are probably at least one of those Microsoft games, maybe. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Come on. Like, uh, of course, it's not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. At but... least one or two of those Microsoft games are here. That's why they didn't name them. Right. right cause because it's going to get announced in something very soon. Right. Because Nintendo gets to announce it. Like, that's why that deal right. has already. Like, uh, I don't mean to immediately go to the Xbox thing instead, but I was surprised no, yeah, how many we're people ready. were uh, surprised or upset. They're like, why won't you just say what the games are? I'm like, because they probably can't. Yeah, There's I mean, even if deals they, in place, even if they could, it's like this is like this podcast got moved up. Like this was a conversation they were planning to have later. They're they're having it now. Uh, so it's like they're they're trying to explain something to you, and that's not to like, oh, we're going to disrupt everything. They basically did tell us what those games were as well. So. The Xbox podcast came out, the business update, it was 23-ish minutes. Um, the first half was about, hey, all these people are freaking out about this thing we should address. Uh, which games are going over to other other platforms? They said there's going to be four games, and that's it. I don't know if they use the term for for now, but they basically made it sound like this, they said, this is what's happening. There's four games for now. There's four yeah. games that are definitely happening. Yes. Right, They but uh, they didn't say what those games were, as Mike said, but they were like two... Like older games and two live servicey games, basically, and everyone's like, is there okay. like two like more like social games, two games that are like smaller things that, that have, have kind of reached while. their potential audience on Xbox? Both of them are they're all like over a year old. I mean, yeah, it, it, you don't have to be Nostradamus here. It's it's Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, Grounded, and Sea of Thieves, right? Yep. It's it's those four games, yeah, absolutely, and uh. I mean, this lines up with a lot of stuff we had been we had been hearing from a variety of sources. I had heard about Sea of Thieves, and here it is. Um, and then they clarified uh, that Starfield would not be coming, and Indiana Jones would not be coming. Well, here's what they said. What they said was Starfield and Indiana Jones aren't those one of those four games. Good point. You're right. You're right. And and it's like those things could also change in the future. It does. They did also say like. Um, everything is on the table. Like they're, they're willing to consider everything uh, is kind of how they basically said it. And then, um, but that doesn't mean that uh, everything is coming at the same time. They're like, not everything is going to go to these other platforms. Uh, it, basically what we have here is kind of like a pretty similar situation to what we had before. A lot of games from Microsoft are on Xbox for quite some time. And every once in a while, one of those games sneaks over to the other platforms. Now, the reason behind all this, they said that as well. We, could, we talked about it at the top of the show. They are looking to grow their audience uh, because uh, they, they don't want to just go and like, hey, we have this smaller audience in Xbox. Let's just find new ways to charge them money. Instead, let's try to grow our audience in different ways. Um, and and they, I think they're also like working backward from the world has changed. They said this in this podcast as well, where, hey, there was a time where the biggest fish in the pond was the console itself. It was... Everything serves the console because the console is bigger than any one game. And now they've had for years now, like Roblox on there, which has a business of its own that is bigger than the Xbox. And they have Minecraft, which is bigger than all the consoles put together. And they um, they see Fortnite. Call of Duty now in Fortnite. These things that are platforms unto themselves. And at a certain point, it becomes a little absurd to continue pretending that the console is the biggest thing and not these big games. And so I, I think that like that has changed their thinking and we're seeing all the, the that manifest in these new strategies a little bit. But it, at the end of the day, this isn't like some huge shift. It's a continued evolution of what they've been doing for a long time. It, it is. It's a big step forward, though. Right. It, you know, I don't want it to be be like, oh, they did this before we had. That's you know, what they've been saying for years, though. Yeah. And, you know, those were a while ago. It's been a long time. And these are going to be like four games uh, you know, and these games are interesting. It, it was it was very interesting how they're kind of walking a tightrope here of being like, hey, like these four games are old. There's like really good reasons why we're doing this. And there are. And yet they're, they're still being like, by the way, like 10 years from now, what do you guys think is going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I like, mean, they are still preparing us someday for something like Gears of War or Halo or, or, you know, everything being everywhere. Yeah, I mean, definitely. They they see the writing on the wall. They know things are going to continue to change drastically. And they're 
you know, they're, they're dip, tipping, uh, dipping the toe in uh, because they know the right. way that the wind is blowing. And they've been moving in this direction for a while. This is just the latest manifestation of that, I think. And, and yeah. they said they're going to they're, they said they're going to see how these games do. Yeah. They're gonna see right. how these games do. And I, I bet I bet that leads them to doing it with more games. Big surprise. Um some other things i mean they said like no fundamental change to exclusivity i think that means for the most part most of these games going forward are going to be exclusive to xbox for some time um maybe not three years but at least for some time and uh like if you want to play an xbox game as quickly as possible you're either going to get it on pc or, or xbox uh they mentioned that there's 34 million game pass subscribers that does include the Game Pass Core, which previously was Xbox Live Gold, not yeah, some is that sh- number bad or good or because I've bad, been seeing mixed things. That's what I think it's, pre- it's pretty low. I think if it's pretty low, if it includes people who were on Xbox Live Gold before. I mean, wait, what? Why? Like, why aren't more people getting Game Pass? I guess. I mean, there's only so like, if like based on the the Take Two numbers about how many uh, uh, you know consoles are in the world from the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation Five generation, uh, there's about twenty five to twenty seven million excuse me, Xbox Series X's and S's in the world, people could still use a Game Pass on PC and Xbox One. How many people are still playing on Xbox One, keeping a subscription? Probably not that many. And then on PC, it's like people are just on Steam. So yeah, it's growing double digit. They said there's double digit growth in cloud and on PC, uh, but it's a much smaller pool. So it's easier to get that double digit growth. And I, I just think it comes down to the people that would take advantage of it on console have it. And that is a limited number. And they were pretty clear, like, don't don't expect Game Pass to be on these other platforms like PlayStation. Yeah, they or, said or that's Nintendo. not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Like, the fact, they kind of left out it up as a reason for why, like, Xbox consoles are still special and have inherent value. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that number's not it doesn't seem great. Uh, but I think it's I think it speaks to what again, what they're saying, like, these things have reached their limit in a min in many ways. Um and then, then they talked about overall the industry, like the industry is not growing uh, in terms of uh, the console gaming and again, the, the industry that they put games out into. Uh, it is stagnant year over year, at least this year. And he mentioned that AMD said that they expect to sell fewer AMD powered consoles this fiscal year. And that's his way of saying this is happening over on PlayStation as well. It's, that's, that's how he couched that language. Oh, but that's what exactly what he's trying to say PlayStation there. PlayStation said as much themselves. And, PlayStation, and PlayStation confirmed as much. Exactly. So it's like he like he's like trying to say, hey, these are I have diagnosed the problem in the industry that everyone knows is is happening. How do you, of course this is going to affect how we treat like our our like how we're going to put out games. And so here we are. Um, I do think it probably gets to a point where the, yeah. When they're, when they're like ready to bring back Gears of War, why wouldn't they just go all out put a Gears of War collection? On, on the Switch 2 PlayStation, and then the new Gears is exclusive to Xbox for some years. Yeah, you're right, exactly. I don't think we're going to see, like, Gear 6 launch day and date on PlayStation 5 along uh, with the Xbox version. Um, I mean, you still see here how tepid they are about that perception. They even kind of said, like, hey, these games that come to, like, multi-platforms, I forget the exact wording, but it's almost like, those aren't really Xbox yeah, games. Yeah, they said, like, we, we don't associate them with, like, being Xbox. I mean, I, I mean, listen, I think That's Sea of Thieves weird. is, like, I associate Sea of Thieves with Xbox. That's, like, the kind of thing where uh, I right. know a lot of people who play just... a lot of that, and they're, like, all in on their Xbox, and a lot of Xbox dudes are, like, yeah, I play Sea of Thieves constantly, so I think that one's a little weird. Is that their way of saying it's not Halo, Gears of War, or Forza yet? It is. They're definitely saying that. Yes. I think it's also saying like, hey, there are some big games that we are investing in going forward that we are putting a lot of time into. That's Starfield and uh, Indiana Jones, things like that. But um, I, I mean, I, I get them trying to create that delineation, but it's not. Uh, yeah, it's weird. It, it was a strange thing to say. Now, they are doing this podcast to reassure people. One of the things you could do to reassure people is to, to uh, confirm that you are in the hardware business to, to stay. And they did as much. They said, hey, not only are we going to have something to announce this holiday in terms of something new when it comes to hardware, uh, but we are going to do another piece of hardware that will be the biggest technological leap you've ever seen. Next which, gen announcement. Let's yes, go. Yes, a next gen announcement, which is I mean, listen, um, maybe they'll surprise me, but got to be a lie. <laughs> it's got, like, <laughs> what are you talking about, guys? But it, the diminishing it returns are the, here uh, in such a hard way. Like, what are we talking? I mean, listen, it might have so many, like, 
uh, bells and whistles in terms of features that make games like just really perform better than they ever have. Uh, and that's no. what they're talking about. Uh, like I could see like, oh, we have our own DLSS and we have our own frame generation and all this stuff is going to be in there and we, we can't wait to show it to you. And machine learning, uh, the games are still going to look pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I have a feeling no matter what, I'm still going to be choosing somehow between a 30 FPS and a 60 <laughs> FPS mode. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, yeah, look, it, hey, it's it's like the marketing speak, I get it. But yeah. look, like, I was there, Gandalf. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when we went from, like, Super Nintendo to a PlayStation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, no, there's there's just actually no way. Unless you start giving me a holodeck, there's actually no way you could do a jump that is like that again. What are we talking about? Yeah, I, 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 at the very least, what they are likely saying that is true is that they are going to try to have the most powerful console again. Now, that's something that they've um, done recently uh, with the Xbox One X. Uh, and, you know, that was, that was more powerful. And that was pretty good. They tried to do that with the Xbox Series X, and that has just not really worked out because people are treating the PS5 as the lead platform. The PS5 is really good hardware, and so a lot of people are finding ways to take advantage of that. So when you go to the Digital Foundry breakdown, yeah, sometimes the Xbox game runs better, but a lot of the time, a lot of times it's just like, oh, it's, yeah, the PS5 is just handling this better. Seems like it got more love from the devs. Um, do you think yeah. Microsoft is maybe saying, hey, we, you know, here's where our numbers are, but the people who like Xbox, they really like Xbox. Maybe we get away. Maybe we're the ones who make like the $800 console, and its whole thing is that, yeah it's, yeah, it's more expensive than the PlayStation, but it is just better. We'll go back to, like, old 3DO times, right? That's They're going to make the modern 3DO in a way. I mean, that's, like, not such a bad idea. I, mean, I don't know why not, honestly. Right, kind of like, why I almost not? prefer having that instead yeah. of uh, having, like... I mean, because, look, if you don't want to say, I don't want to spend that much on a game console, well, then just use what PC you have right now to play Halo. I know you don't all have gaming PCs. But, well, I mean, but, yeah, uh, but it's, like, then stream it from the cloud i mean listen i think that xbox would probably still have like if they have the handheld as the other option yeah get that if you had like this yeah if you had the handheld and then you had like yeah like hey and then here's our 800 900 dollar game console i mean because because uh, like what can they do that playstation cannot like playstation something playstation probably doesn't want to have the dual skew they want to have like the one that has the disc drive and the one that doesn't and then they but they want to have the ps5 is the ps5 um, when they get to the PS6, they're probably not going to want to have a PS6 and then a PS6 Pro right on launch day. But what Microsoft could do that that PlayStation can't is what you just said, $700, $800, and it's significantly more powerful because PlayStation needs to have one that is still mostly affordable to people who are going to buy it for FIFA. And that is a broad worldwide audience that they cannot forsake in any way. Um, and Microsoft maybe could, maybe already has, that's something. I actually, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. Because I think what we've been sitting here, we have these conversations. We're like, Microsoft should try to get away from the nose to nose, head to head competition with the PS. They can't make another just whatever PlayStation's doing again. Exactly. They can't do that they again. And they, they definitely should. And it seems like they don't want to. Seems like they're trying to get away from it. They're talking to Nvidia. They're talking to Intel. At least that's the rumors. And uh, and I, I believe that. I mean, we saw that they were at least looking at ARM. Uh, based architecture when, when the FTC leaks happened. So we know they're considering a lot of different options. Um, yeah, if they go hard on that stuff and really with something like ARM, they could like, okay, the $400, $500 version of this is a handheld that is basically an Xbox Series S still in some ways. And it's going to run all your live service games just fine. And you could dock it and all this stuff. Maybe that, maybe that's one version. And then the other version is a big expensive one. I kind of hope that's what they do. Yeah, we'll see. And I mean, hey, look, yeah, you'll, you maybe you'll sell more consoles uh, than you even do now because, yeah, it's going to be a lot more expensive. But I don't know. You differentiate yourself. Uh, but hey, look, this is a uh, fantasy booking at the moment. The point is that sure. there's, they've got to do something different. They can't just make the Xbox equivalent of the PlayStation 6 the next go around. That clearly just didn't work. Here. Even when they did have the Series S to sort of differentiate a bit, wasn't really enough. You had Game Pass to differentiate a bit. Wasn't really enough. You, there's got to be something a bit bolder in terms of yeah. making it clear that there is a difference between Xbox and PlayStation. And again, like there is a little bit of that. I'm hearing two stories there because, you know, they are talking about hardware still and how it is important. But then it is also still this message of we're going to meet you where you are. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't matter what platform. Things like it, that. It, the, the truth is they're, they're going to do both. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think like 
you know, the idea is not to like replace one with the other. I think they know that they can do more and keep a lot of their business intact. And, um, uh, but it is, it does require them, like you said earlier, to walk a fine line, to avoid feeling like people are going to lose access to something. That is something they spent some time talking about uh, as well, where it's like, we understand the people who invested in their, in their games on our platform. And we put a lot of like time into like cross buy so that you have your game. And, and if like, you don't have an Xbox anymore, well, you can just get on PC now and stuff like that. We support that. Like, that's what we want to keep happening going forward. And we want to expand that and do that in new ways. Um, so th- yeah, they're. It seems like they just want to keep adding new things to bring in more people. Um, I do think that does diminish the immediate immediate value of the console of the hardware itself. Uh, but I don't think they're trying to diminish that to zero. They're just like trying to recognize that they're uh, that they need to do more, and so they need to be in more places, and that inherently just lowers the value of the console a little bit. Um, they also uh, talked about hey, they did have some good news, Diablo Four is coming to Game Pass on March 28th. It's, it is interesting that the first Activision Blizzard one is, I think at the end of last year, uh, the uh, Diablo team was like, well, no, that's not fucking going in Game Pass. You guys are crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, no, you're right, fir- I forgot about <laughs> that's that. That's the first one in Game Pass, which I'm, I'm not surprised by at all. It's the one that no. made the most sense. And I don't think many would... people are surprised by it. No, I mean, come on. It's a game that's, you know, it's on consoles, it's on Xbox, it's on PC. Now, like, I'm not, am I going to be able to, Play it on PC Game Pass, I assume not, right? That's only on the console. That's something I'm a little curious uh, about. I don't know. You can't, you can't install Diablo 4 via P- the Xbox app, right? You got no. Have, that's that's know, probably right. It's probably just console at first. Probably just for the console, I imagine. I don't know exactly how that works. I mean, I guess they can just they can they can just tie both. your. Yeah, they could just have the the like the launcher. Uh, chat saying it's on yeah, both. Can, I guess. They could just yeah. tie your your your. Battle.net account. Right, the way that it works. Yeah. A lot whatever. of games require you to like that. launch like on Steam. They already announced it for PC Game Pass. So. There you go. They, All right, then. There they, you go. they did like clarify it won't be going to um, uh, uh, Game Pass core members. And like people are like, like acting scandalized by this. I'm like, guys, those are the Xbox Live Gold people. This is the way it's always been. What are you talking about? Man. Like, there's no change there. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. Um, it's more people that could potentially buy the sixty dollars horse armor or whatever uh-huh. in that game. Yeah, some weird monetization in that game for sure. Uh, and I, I think they'll be happy to welcome a lot, a lot of new people in there through Game Pass. That you're right can be monetized in other ways. And I bet a lot of people actually do end up converting because a lot of people like Diablo. Um, and then was there? A, oh yes, they also mentioned uh, that they have a lot of games in the works. They uh, um. Booty. Matt Booty said there was like 10 games for this year. There's a bunch that have already been announced. Uh, maybe there's a few more that they haven't like talked about explicitly, but he said 10 games. Uh, not all of them are going to be like the biggest like AAA games. There's It's a scale of games, but 10 games. And then um, he said they're going to have some new stuff to talk about at their showcase in June, confirming that there will be another yeah. showcase in June around the time when we, we used to get E3. So, yeah. Hey, uh, how'd you feel about this being a podcast? I'm, like, completely fine with it. I get it. A lot of people said it could I be mean, an Xbox Wire post. I agree with that. But I think it's fine as a podcast. I, I, look, I, I'm saying this to somebody who's doing a video podcast right now. I think calling that a podcast first and foremost was a little strange. I mean, sure, you could have just yeah. called it a presentation or something, whatever. But whatever it was, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it was kind of it was short and to the point, even though it was mostly talking heads it was interesting. I think they handled it generally very uh, well. I, you know, the reactions from people I find more interesting. Like, I, I'm surprised by people like, oh, see, look, it's everything's fine. It's not happening. When they said, I mean, it's happening. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of uh, I saw a lot of YouTube videos where it's like the leakers were l- l- wrong. So like, well, fucking half the games that we talked about are in there. They confirmed <laughs> well, yeah, they're coming. I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, uh, I don't think that's it, about Starfield. And but you're right. The way that they talk to people are not recognizing what's happening i've seen a lot on both sides where it's like hey this confirms my preconceived notions and i'm like oh great cool so we're just going to be back to all this being the same tomorrow like a lot there was a little bit of like a rorschach test of this or a lot of people saw from it what they wanted to see yes i guess and that's annoying but i'll just ignore those people that's fine we'll we'll be completely okay um yeah I, i thought it was pretty well handled i thought that they uh talked in a way that was honest in a way that is refreshing as they often do and at the oh, same no. time it is kind of wearing a little Anyone bit th- what's that mike oh, you, mike can oh, you hear I'm me back. 
You okay? Just a second. I was just, I think, yeah, think we just lost for a you for, for a second. We're, yeah, uh, I think my internet hiccup for a second. Sorry there. No, no, no worries. It's okay. Um, I, I was just saying, like, hey, we, the, I like the podcast. I like, I like the format. I like the way these people speak. I think Sarah Bunn, Matt Booty, Phil Spencer are pretty good when they when they talk from, like, when they shoot from the hip a little bit. And obviously, this is not them just straight shooting from the hip. This is a very contained presentation. Whatever. I like it. I think they do a pretty good job of it. At the same time, it is wearing a little bit thin that it's like, Xbox makes a choice. Uh, a lot of people are like, what's going on? This is confusing. This is scary. And then we get like another presentation or whatever from Phil Spencer coming out and answering things. And I, again, I think he's good at it. But boy, I think people would just be happier if there were a lot of great games coming out and they could just play those and not think about this stuff. And it feels like we keep having to do this because that's not happening. Uh, so I'm just like a little bit worn down by this like repeated process over and over and over again. Sure, but it does seem like Xbox does have some some good games coming out. I am excited sure, for yeah. Indiana Jones. I am excited for that. I mean, hey, like right now, they might uh, have more coming out, especially in the second half of the year than PlayStation. Who knows? Um, but, you know, it, I, I think uh, they're getting to, to a better part of that, at least. Right. That was the complaint for the longest time was just the drought of games. And it hurt them, right? It, it maybe hurt them irrevocably, irrevocably, Irre irrevocably. Irre Irrevocable. I knew I was missing a syllable in there. Man, I'm surprised uh, I said that right the first time. I was like, Good I'm going to try to say this word and it's going to go bad. And it actually came yeah. out correct. Yeah, you're a hero. Yeah, that's. Thank you. I don't want to throw it around, but you're here for me. Um, I mean, I feel like there's more to talk about here, but I mean, we went over most of it. I, I got. I know we got a lot of super chats that are going to want to talk about this. Yeah, Maybe I we mean, can start getting to some, those. Some they're, they're releasing more games on yeah. other platforms, platforms including Nintendo and PlayStation. Not all of the games, and there's some that they're probably afraid to do because they know how much people get upset about. And I bet that was the conversation with Starfield because there yeah. was, I mean, they they put that game up on a poll last year, right? It was the standard bear for the Xbox brand next year. It, it might just be a bit too much for them to put that too on much, PlayStation too soon. already. Yep, I think again, like Gears of War are probably how, similar. How much money are you really gonna make putting? Putting uh, Starfield on PlayStation right now, right? Is yeah, that really yeah. I mean, be it worth probably, yeah, probably sells like damage said, to the brand. A million, two million copies, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not yeah. all the money in the world, but it's something. You think like, you think somebody's like, what about Redfall? And they're like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I think they are well aware that they cannot do anything like that with Redfall until that is a game is in a place where people would be actually happy to play it. So and, never. So maybe never. Um, maybe. Maybe never, Jeff. Uh, so many never. games have had redemption arcs. You think that's the one that cannot? Yes. Okay, cool. Never mind. Fair <laughs> yes, enough. I Asked and answered. You know? <laughs> listen. Listen. I, I play original Final Fantasy fourteen. They, they can do it. I believe in them. I, yeah, listen. I, I do, too. They remade well, that game. Look, if, if, if Xbox was come out and say, yeah, we're going to try again. We're going to make Redfall again. See if we can do it better this time. Maybe then. I, I think, like, just repeating a little bit, I think the big takeaway is these are people that, like, have the insights, they see how things are moving, and when they look at it, and they look around, and they see that Roblox is, like, an order of magnitude bigger than the Xbox console business, I think it's hard for them to be like, of course we have to be moving in a direction where we're thinking about that. It was, at one point, the, the games serve the console, and now it's clearly the console serve these games. So we're, we have to be in the business of creating those kinds of games. And that's what they're doing now. That's that's what, you know, acquiring King is about. That's what acquiring Call of Duty is about. Uh, that's what acquiring Minecraft was about way back when they did that. It's been that's been 10 years ago now, almost uh, maybe not maybe eight years. Like, um, was it 2016 or 2014? It was a long time ago. A long ago. time ago. Long time ago. Uh, and so it's like, it's all been kind of going in this direction and they've seen this. And so it's kind of the toothpaste is out of the tube. Consoles are in a place where they are still super important. The people who play consoles spend a lot of money on games and they are not going to give that up. No one's giving that up. But even PlayStations look around being like, shit, we need to make more money. And PlayStation sounds like part of what they're deciding to do. And they've already done this a little bit with like raising a lot of prices is we need to make more money from the people who are already here. We got to monetize them more. We got to squeeze them for more value now. And then it's like, well, and now we got to maybe put these games out on PC a little bit faster, get a little bit more aggressive. So they're also looking for ways to grow because they see the writing on the wall as well. And they are the market leader. So of course, Microsoft's doing this. This is just kind of inevitable at some point. Not it just, this does not go back to consoles are dead. Like this is not that it's just 
everything is evolving past to a, past the point where it's like you can just be a console company and that's all you need to be. It's like, no, these companies have grown to a point where they've tapped out that market seemingly. They did a great job of re- reaching everybody who would possibly want a console. And every time like a new person enters the world that is like, I'm so into games, I will spend $500 on a system. Those people are coming right in. They're choosing one of these. They're probably choosing PlayStation, but they're choosing one of these and they're going, maybe they're choosing Nintendo, whatever. But that is not enough to make sense for the growth that these companies require to service their investors. So uh, yeah, things had to change. We are at that point right now, and oh well. Um, I Everybody's sp- freaking out. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess it's my, if, if your takeaway from this and everything that's been going on as well, it's I guess it's just business as usual. Like maybe on some surface level, but no, no, things are changing. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, twenty like they, they, they said this in the spot, like twenty twenty three was so good and with games, and yet there wasn't much growth. It's like, yeah, so if a year like that can happen. And people aren't rushing to go buy consoles and, mm-hmm. and play games. And PlayStation misses their target. Like, we, I guess this is, you know, this is news we could talk about a little bit. Like, PlayStation was wanted to sell 25 million. They're only going to, they are now lowering their target to 21 million PlayStation 5 sold. And they are going to probably have a roughish time getting to that, despite all throughout 2023, the PS5 being aggressively on sale down to like $350 at point, $400 a lot. Sale and, like, all these amazing games you could play resident evil 4 you could play boulders gate 3 right they didn't have to right. like make a version of that from a box of scraps like they did on xbox that was all right i was always on playstation and alan wake and all these games that you know oh wow this is tr- generational games and targets are lowered yes that's not great no yeah i mean it's it's a sign that stagnation is here for consoles and it, that I mean there was probably another growth spurt in the future at some point uh, but these companies can't sit around and wait for it. And so they are in a position where they have to find out what is next. And it's that's going to be a messy process. We're seeing it with Xbox. It's been, it's been messy. At the very least, it's been messy. Uh, PlayStation has um, a little bit more leeway in that they are the market leader, but they uh, have a little less leeway in that PlayStation is the successful business at Sony and everything else is kind of on fire except for a few other small segments of their business. So it's probably going to get messy for PlayStation as well. Meanwhile, we're there's the a lot of great games. Boys, Jeff. Yeah, we we're the messy boys. That. We'll we'll pick it up for you, everybody, and we'll let you know what's going on. Um, all right, Mike, let's take a quick break. Let's go back. Let's get to some of these super chats. A lot are coming in. Thanks, uh, everybody who's watching. About 900 people watching live. We always appreciate oh, wow. it. Take oh, a quick... God, it's literally 911 people are watching when I looked at it. Reminds me of that tragedy. <laughs> that tragedy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, we'll get to it right after this, everybody. Right, right back. Okay, no problem. Super break. You All know right. what? They call it a podcast because if they call it anything else, it will be like, "Oh, this is a fucking presentation. We're yes. gonna present." Yeah, exactly. A... They can't. They can't call it, a, call it a presentation for that exact reason. You're right. If they're yeah. then like, "Well, present us with something," it's like, "Well, it's almost like there wasn't that much to say to begin with." Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, that is like the biggest thing where like I saw Gene like I'm not even gonna write a story about this. I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm glad I don't have to like figure out what these headlines look like." I mean, I, I, the obvious headlines. Oh, they confirm a next gen Xbox. Like that's SEO kidnap, of course. You, yeah, uh, catnip what, what, go kidnap uh catnip what's the headline the fanboys were fucking out of their minds like yeah, yeah they're like <laughs> yeah. okay i feel like phil has a little bit of, of a fault in this one because he went like oh, careful we're gonna next week we're gonna talk about this this is kind of serious let's be a little bit of mysterious about this like what it's just like yeah, I mean, that, it. that's why, like, uh, people wonder why, like, Nintendo will say, oh, we have nothing to say on this matter. Or they just won't say anything at all. And it's because of stuff like this. Yes. Like, they're they're yeah. just like, hey, oh, yeah. y'all are being crazy over there. We're going to let you be crazy. We're I mean, going to do business stuff. The reality is, Back. like, I think these conversations were happening in a much ser- much more serious way than they're letting on here. And that they got to... um those rumors starting to come out and then they're like, well, we're going to have that conversation like in a couple of weeks, like maybe, maybe like more than a month away. Uh, do we have to wait till then or what's going on? It's like, oh no, we have to make decisions now. So let's just make the safe ones. Let's do, do this stuff. And let's pull back and we'll revisit these conversations in a little bit. Cause 100% everybody, let's just like reiterate this gears of war was being talked about in a pretty serious way. Like that is 100. That was being considered. Doesn't mean it's happening. Doesn't mean it's happening. Right. But it's like, it was being considered enough to the point where it could have happened. Um, and so like, like that clearly they're like, well, let's not worry about that right now. Let's just talk about the four games that we know oh, are man, happening. They were talking about it. I'm sure this scared them off it. A good yes, bit. exactly. Right. And oh. I think they're, they were happy to like retreat from that for now. So they could just go have this podcast, get that out of the way, talk about those four games and then revisit <laughs> right. that stuff a little bit later after they put out some games that people are really happy about 
and they can be in a better spot. And it's like, oh man, that Indiana Jones, that was really great. And we played that exclusively for, for quite some time. And it's like, oh, you're going to put the Gears of War collection out on PlayStation? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but, I bet yeah. people will care anyways, but yes. Yes, of course, they, of course they will. All right. And we're back. And Mike, we got some super chats. Why don't you read those to me? Yes, Z, thank you for joining our Lincoln tier here thank on you. Game Mess. Brogan95 says, uh, hello, Jeff, Garage Shrimp Grub, and Mike Noki Party Minotti. I'm looking for a gaming handheld and can't decide between the ROG or the OLED Steam Deck. Which would you choose to uh, buy and why? We haven't really hashed this out yet, Jeff, but I think we're on opposite sides of the fence on this one. Well, I think I, I'm I like, like my I have a nuance, I'm, I'm nuanced on it. Like, uh, if you are someone Not who. Me, I'm a simp. Oh, well, that's that's fair. Yes. Uh, I, if you are someone that wants to play uh, Xbox Game Pass games or you want to get uh, some of those other um, stores and you don't want to worry about like going into the desktop mode on Steam Deck, which or, or dual booting Windows and stuff like that, which you almost certainly aren't, then the ROG Ally is a really good choice and you're going to be completely fine with that. I would I would still probably pick that over like the, the Lenovo Legion Go and some of those other ones. Uh, but I, the Steam Deck OLED is the better handheld device. It really is uh, in terms of better, much better battery life. That screen is gorgeous. Uh, the, the audio is actually better, and even though it's very good on the, the uh, ROG. Um, and then the like just uh, using the device as a, something you take with you and you can like log in everything and it just kind of works. It's much better at that as well. But... The Rog Ally plays games better uh, once you're playing the game, and uh, it, it can play all those games I mentioned before from like the uh, Windows Game Store and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you're all in on the Rog, right? Yeah, so, I mean, look, what I like about it is that uh, like I think it's more comfortable than a Steam Deck for me. I really like those analog sticks. I don't know why, but those always feel good to use. Um, I like the user interface. It makes it very easy to get into all these different uh, game launchers, whereas Steam Deck, you have to work a little bit to get into anything that isn't Steam. Correct. Which, you know, obviously it's fine. The downside is the battery life. I play, like, in the same place on my bed, so that's not a giant problem for me. But if you, like, want your gaming handheld to be really portable, then maybe you don't want the ROG. Yes, yeah, I, I think that's right. All right. All right. Con Allwood says, best milk flavor. I think the answer is cheese. Gross. Um, <laughs> well, not cheese flavored milk, just like, you what? know, just like cheese. Oh, milk. oh, once milk becomes cheese, that's the best. Okay, well, I then I'm with you, you on that. Gross. They're practically uh... the same thing. You're like, eh. Well, because I, 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 I thought you were going to say cheese milk, like, which was gross. Cheese milk. That's just, that's just milk. <laughs> Uh, okay, but you could definitely make milk more cheesy. If, uh, like, <laughs> definitely, and then that would be disgusting. Yeah, just leave it out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cho chocolate milk, if you have to have, like, have milk in the name, yeah, chocolate milk's the best. Chris says, I think I'm more worried about PlayStation's future than Xbox's. I mean, Jeff, look, I think you know how good a soundbite it is because you keep saying it, and I don't blame you. But yeah, PlayStation won the console war, and so what? Yes, I mean, right? it's like in my head, it's like, man, I need to just make that YouTube video because that's a good YouTube video headline. It's because it's, it's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, wow, look at Xbox. They're gonna put start playing their games on PlayStation. What? How? How is PlayStation celebrating? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I like worried. For PlayStation's future, I mean, listen, these companies are going to figure a lot of stuff out, and it's mostly going to be fine. I just, for me, my perspective is I like playing games, and I am finding a ton of places to uh, derive good games from. It's not usually these days PlayStation or Xbox. It is occasionally them, and sometimes they're facilitating those games. I love Pentiment. I'm really looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, but... 90% uh, of my gaming time is coming from places like Steam and and uh, and, and other places like that. So, uh, I'm, hey, they'll figure stuff out. They'll be fine. They'll make a lot of money, and they'll make even more money in the future. L. Grug says, knowing what you know now, rank Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo on how well you think their 2024 will be. Also, yay, alcohol, Mike. Yes, I have a golden ale from Penguin City. Almost empty, sadly. Um... I mean, Nintendo's a bit of everything. Everybody's a question mark, I guess. Right. Uh, if Nintendo has a Switch 2 with a 3D Mario game, then they just win for me, of course. Me it's too. going to matter more than anything. Um, I think Xbox's, like, gnomes are very exciting. I'm very interested in that Indiana Jones game. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised how... I, I, I got it when we saw about it, that summer thing, and a lot of people weren't hot on it. I'm surprised that some people are still kind of like that with the last showcase. I thought the last showcase was 
good for a vowed. I, I think you I think you're underestimating the number of people who are like they played Skyrim and they're like, I hate the way that this combat feels. And Avowed look at, looked enough like that to them where it's like it's that weightless sort of swing of a thing and people just have a visceral reaction against Man. that. I don't mind that. I have a ton of fun mm. with the combat in Skyrim. And I think Avowed looks like a lot of fun. But um, a lot of people just kind of go, oh, gives them the heebie-jeebies when they see that. Sony has actually some pretty fun stuff at like the beginning of this year. Right. Rebirth is going to carry them a long way. Yeah, Hell Darts 2 is fantastic. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is coming soon. I, you know, I think we're all kind of like, well, geez, uh, now they're saying they're not going to have any like uh, franchise games coming out this year, which I, I, by that, I assume they mean like anything of like a God of War. Ghost, I get, they Ghost said God of War, Spider-Man is their example. Might, what's that? Their examples were Spider-Man and God of War. They said that's right. the level of game we're not going to have. And Ghost of Shishima is on that it level, is. and I thought we might have gotten that sequel this year. Well, now we clearly aren't. So what is coming this year? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I like I said, I've heard Astro could could still make it this year. That'd be amazing. It's fucked up they don't consider that a franchise. Like, <laughs> I mean, listen, it sold better than any of those other games, right? Fifty four hey, million copies. Hey, let's go. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. I I think that hey, Hell Divers two and and um, Rebirth is going to make this year like and the a, Vagina Heart game and the Vagina Heart game, Stellar Blade, right? I. I still am not sure why people are like so. Uh, it's got to just be like, oh, the character's sexy, right? That's it. I mean, I know it looks kind of fun, but it just looks like maybe it's going to be kind of a bad bayonetta. I don't know. I think it's going to. Uh, I mean, it looks a lot. Not a like bad bayonetta. A, gen a generic bayonetta. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. look. Uh, sure. I hope it's good. Whatever. Um, I, I think right now, uh, a lot for Microsoft rides on how good Indiana Jones is going to be. If Indiana Jones comes out and it's mid. Uh, it's a bad year for Xbox again. Um, so I don't know if I, based on what we know now, I probably would still probably put PlayStation slightly ahead of Xbox based on, I think rebirth is going to be very good. And I love hell divers too. And if Astro comes out, that'd be great. Um, and then Mike's right. If Nintendo has a 3d Mario at launch for the switch Two, that's an automatic win. Cheap Eam says just now getting here playing catch up. Sorry if you mentioned already, but is there word on whether the new Astro Bot game will be a VR game? Crossing their fingers. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's that's the that's the full answer. My guess is like maybe the reason it's coming out this year is because maybe it's launching with the PS5 Pro and it's going to be like one of those introducing you to the console things again. I hope it's I, I hope it's just a real big boy game. It should be Jesus Christ. I don't. I don't think it's going to be a VR thing, though. I, I, don't, I don't think don't it's going to be a VR thing. No, I don't. No, no way. That, 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 why, why would if they were going to do that? They should have launched it with the PSVR two. It's past that point, so no, I, I don't think so. Yeah, too late totally now. Brian O says either you try Banishers and then any word on a uh, new Asobi uh, Banishers. I have not tried them. We just talked about Asobi, right? So yeah, I um. I've not tried Banishers. I know Jesse was in the chat earlier, really liked it. A lot of people seem to really enjoy it. It's the, an action game from Don't Nod. I like Don't Nod. They've been, doing, been they, doing a lot of cool stuff. So My brother's playing it and is talking about liking it. Yeah, people seem to like it once they start playing it. I'm going to have a hard time making time for it right now, uh, which is a shame. Willow Davis says, out to Valentine's Day dinner. I told my fiance I bought a Mega Man Hubble bundle. She apparently has never heard of Mega Man. Looked up a picture and still no um all right i don't Mike. like that mega man less or more famous than cloud strife uh, here's the thing with this uh it's so, it's so weird because there's just like this really hard wall between like a, like an average gamer would recognize it and what they think and then just like a joe off the street doesn't really play video games and they're going to know a few mario characters and like Pikachu and Pikachu, such a transmedia character anyways, um, more or less in cloud strife. I, I don't know. I might be like, part of me is like, Oh, I don't mega man. So omnipresent to me. And he's not just from like that one game, but I'm clearly biased. I am fucking wearing a mega man <laughs> shirt right now. Fair enough. Rogers. OG says glad more games are going multi-platform. I wish Nintendo and Sony would also do this. This is our dumb and only restrict others from enjoying games. I. I it's more. I it's I, more I, nuanced I, than that, right? Because like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of like the nice way to put it. Because like, like, like when I, when I see people be like, it's good to just everyone can play more games. I'm like, yeah, yes, of course. But there's there's more going on here than that, right? Okay, like, 
Sony said this in their last earnings report earlier this week, that it makes sense, it made sense for them to spend a lot of money on their big single-player games because it boosts their hardware. And that's what those games were about. That's what they said. So you get $250 million budget games from Sony because of their hardware. And because it's exclusive, that's what makes it worth people getting. And that's what boosts, that's the part that actually boosts the hardware. Um, and I'm not, I'm not someone who has much, of a, much need for $250 million budgeted games. But a lot of people do like them. And it's a lot of people who are even like significantly more casual and like, they're like, Hey man, I, I like a game that looks expensive. I come in, I play one or two games a year and this is awesome. Um, so there, there's clearly some value. It, it creates some reason to make ki the kinds of games that we probably wouldn't necessarily get otherwise, unless they are very particular kind of game that can support that budget through monetization and long-term play, or they are just games that always sell 30 million copies to 50 million copies, like a Grand Theft Auto, a Red Dead Redemption, or a Call of Duty. Um, and those are like very particular kinds of games that appeal to a very particular kind of person. And I think it's pretty different than what you get from like a, um, even a Spider-Man or a Last of Us. So yeah, uh, it's not that simple, but you're also not wrong. It's good that more people can play these games. Cool. I like Miracle says the only person that can say video games is Brian fucking Cox. Yeah, man. Hey. He can fuck the fuck off. <laughs> uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, God, who bought that? I'm sorry. I can't remember. Pugtato? It was, it was Pugtato, yeah, Pug right? Yeah, Pugtato. Thank you, Pugtato. Uh, Pugtato mentioned to me that uh, the script only said fuck off. So that fuck the fuck off was a bonus yeah, fuck. Man. Wow. You got a oh, bonus fuck for free. buying yeah, cops. Free. Yeah, you got a free Let's fuck. Go. Yep. Uh, so oh, yeah. what the hell is a devil gene? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Norris says Bellatro. Yeah, that's a very good yeah. point. Uh, Adam Wilson, Lincoln member for 17 months, says, hey, hey. Hey, hey, Adam Wilson. Thank you Thanks, so much for your Thanks, support. Adam. Appreciate it. Uh, Anna Forpez, the first super chat here, says, the big deal about the power of the new Xbox is probably to assuage all the complaints about Series S being a downer for devs. Also, great job on Mortal Kombat Mythologies, Mike. I called in March, but you might be done in Feb. I That would shock me, but you might be. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you so much, Annie. Um, You think this is uh, yeah, Annie for president? Anakin Skywalker for president? You think that's what that means? Oh, okay, yeah. Also, yeah. it's a swage. I'm not. I'm sorry. That one I just wanted to help you with. A swage. What's this? Uh <laughs> What did I say? Assage. Assage. You're right. I know that word. <laughs> I know. Okay, okay, I don't know okay. why I said a sage. <laughs> that, one, that one just really got me. I was like rolling like, oh, no. Look, I deserve that one. A <laughs> sage. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, But uh, you think there's going to be another Series S equivalent? Or you think the handheld will take I care of that? I think they're going to get more creative than just two skews of the same box. So... Yeah, yes and no. Um, there will be multiple ways to play something called an Xbox uh, that is still Xbox hardware. It probably won't look exactly the same. Uh, Nancy says, with Hi-Fi Rush coming to Switch, do you think this means a native Xbox One slash PlayStation 4 version will be announced? Are the four games rumored Hi-Fi Rush is the only Series X slash S exclusive? Surely they want to tap into the massive PS4 user base. I mean, do you, do you think it's worth... I, I guess that's a good point if you're making it for Switch and then you're going to bring it to at least PlayStation. I don't maybe they're not going to bother bringing it to like the old Xbox. If you're going to bring it to PlayStation, do you try to release it for PlayStation 4 also at that point? Hmm. Yeah. I get, yeah, right. That's what I was like. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. I I mean, yeah, why not? That if that Unless feels... we're just at a point where we really think like we're just done releasing games on PlayStation 4, which I mean, there's still a no, lot of PS4s out you, there, I guess. I think right? you put it on PS4 because that like is like magnanimous in a way, uh, where it's right. like, hey, we're putting out PS4 games, even if Sony's done doing it. I don't know. Like, it feels like, yeah, what? <laughs> you like you like the dick, big dick energy yeah, of the a little gym. bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it feels like if the game can run on PS4, you put it on PS4. I think that's probably going to happen. Big Fresh Thirty Seven says, "Play Captain Toad, you goobers." I would like to. Don't know if I'm going to have the time. Uh, we'll maybe, maybe that'll part, be part of my uh, Switch nostalgia tour. There you go. Zach Burhan says, can you give your thoughts on why there's so much backlash on something that should be celebrated? Why are people unhappy with the pro proliferation of titles that have traditionally been locked to a specific platform? Yeah, we're talking about this a little bit. It's just it's just not really that like that simple to me. Because um, you could, like, maybe this does damage a brand, and maybe it does get to a point where 
uh, oh, like, oh, that plan was kind of this ambitious plan because the other thing wasn't working. And, um, you know, uh, like, why, why is something a plan B, right? Because it's not your first choice. Yeah. So your first choice was to just make all your games for Xbox. Maybe that's not working. So now we're moving to the plan B. Well, plan A doesn't work. The plan B also doesn't work. Well, then what? Then, then where are we? Mm hmm. It, it's, um, and you know, that, that backlash is, you know, it's coming from a particular kind of person usually. And, uh, it, these are people that, that, you know, when I called those guys toxic last week, it was more, I was more saying like they exist in a, in a part of Twitter that is often very toxic. Uh, and so like, I kind of threw them all in with a bucket and I, Clobriel, I don't think Clobriel is toxic, but no, uh, but it does. Yes. He, it, you, you started that podcast by saying how you didn't get any sleep the day before poor Jeff. I, I know <laughs> that part was not included in the clips, but whatever. Yes. It, it, and it was, so it was like, um, but like that part of Twitter is like, they're always sniping at each other. They're everyone. It, like when you are and like Clobriel does make those lists and then people take those lists and you like fight a fight with it. And that's not what Clobriel about, but, uh, that, that stuff is like, they're spending their free time in engaged in these fights. A lot of these people who are, who do these list wars. And when they see this stuff, it feels like, Oh, I not only is all the money I've spent invested in this, uh, kind of for no good reason, because, you know, I could have got all the stuff that's going to come to PlayStation five. However, they're viewing that really it's about, I've built this identity to protect myself from FOMO. And now that is being undermined, And that is, you know, that's getting to people's identities. And that is really uh, unsettling to some people. Uh, Ariel Delgado says, do you think Hi-Fi Rush 2 will be a bigger game? $60, question mark. I mean, here's my first question. Is there going to be a Hi-Fi Rush 2? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I do. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush 2, uh, like, they like that studio a lot. And I think part of this is, hey, we, but we, you guys like making Hi-Fi Rush. We want to enable you to do that again. Let's make it make sense. Let's get it out everywhere. You guys want to put it out everywhere? Okay, great. Let's keep investing in this and keep it going. Uh, I hope it's $60. I look I, like again. I hate to be it. They should charge more for something. Thirty dollars seemed really low for i Rush. At least forty. Like yep. we're inventing like a price range for a game. Now, what game comes out and costs thirty dollars? They're either twenty or forty usually. Um. So yeah, I I I hope they find some. Look, you could just release a game the same scope of Hi-Fi Rush and say it's a sixty dollar game to me. And I'll believe you. Just pretend like it's a bigger deal. Uh, I hope they find a way to justify to the people who are going to be sensitive about that kind of thing. Agreed. Benji Bob says, do we think the next gen leap is moving to arm? I mean, with, yeah, that's part of it. That, that alone isn't going to get you to the biggest console leap ever, right? Not alone. I mean, it would have to be like. Listen, you could do some really, really, really powerful stuff with ARM um, and, you know, with, with any of these chips, you could do that stuff. Um, but yeah, ARM, I think, affords you the ability to do something that is very powerful, relatively affordable, relatively efficient, and, um, and then can scale down in such a way that a mobile device can work in a way that's just very obvious. Now... Uh, do they go that route? There's no guarantee. I mean, he name dropped AMD during this thing, and now he was saying AMD is like they're worried about their sales. So I, that's not necessarily like we're all aboard on the, the AMD boat. Uh, but he is, you know, still talking about AMD like a partner and stuff like that. So they probably, at the end of the day, still go with AMD. Um, and AMD is getting very good at efficiency, but it's just ARM probably is the future still uh, for a lot of these consoles. It's just not the immediate future. Soul Scream says, is Sony really the market leader over Nintendo? Um, real quick, uh, yeah, just a, uh, Stephen S says Risk 5. Yeah, when we say ARM, that's shorthand for it. It could be Risk 5 as well. Uh, what was that question again, Mike? Sorry. Yeah, is Sony really the market leader over Nintendo? You're talking about the yeah, I mean, the market leader. Uh, it, you know, it depends how you count them and all that stuff. Really, what I say there, what I mean there you is. You never sounded more like Colombo in your life, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, but, but what I mean is. Uh, Xbox and PlayStation are going head to head. So one, one beating the other there is actually something Nintendo being like, yeah, we own the handheld space and we turned our home console into our handheld. And now we're continuing to own the handheld space. They won by not competing necessarily head to head with those other companies. They're like going to go do their own thing. They are clearly still competition. They clearly have, um, a je ne sais quoi that these other companies wish they had in terms of selling games and selling hardware and appealing to families. Um, and if I had to choose any one of these companies to just like 
hey, you, you, Genie forces you to become a, a video game company and you have to live the rest of your life as one of these companies. I would choose Nintendo because I think they have the most of this stuff figured out. So if you're asking for my opinion, I think Nintendo's the leader. Uh, but when we're talking about Microsoft and Sony, we are, I was talking about something very specific. Evan Olmstead says, new Xbox hardware this year or next? handheld um i know they said they're going to talk about hardware late this year jeff i don't think they're releasing something this year i don't think they're releasing it but they said they would talk about it this holiday and um i guess we didn't mention like what we necessarily thought that would be um it it most likely is some sort of revision not a pro but a revision that we did we did see one in that ftc leak now there's a lot of reasons to believe that maybe they're not going full in on what that leak was which is that that cylinder and all that stuff but maybe they have something different um and i suppose what they could do is here is an xbox series x that has a smaller process chip so it's more efficient and because of that we're able to fit like a couple of other like extra uh, modules on the processor that can do better you know, machine learning, visual Im improvements, and frame generation. And now all of these games are running at 4K60. Um, you know, however, the, however they want to get to that or whatever, what they, what, what they want to aim for. That's a possibility. So it's like, in, in fact, it actually kind of is a pro, but it's the same hardware and it's the same, same all this stuff and all the games are exactly the same. And you don't have to do much on the development side, maybe. I, I, that's a possibility. Um, but I also think there's a possibility that it's the handheld. And they could start talking about that this holiday. We'll see. And 10 Derek says in the last 10 years, a third party game has won the game of the year award seven out of 10 shows. Why do people act like first party games are all that matter? I don't know. You're right. I mean, listen, I, I guess I kind of, I mean, they justify, they're exciting. yeah, they're exciting. And they justify the money that we've spent on these machines. Uh, those are the things that make the difference when you are deciding to spend a lot of money on something you want to feel like there is a very good reason that you did that. And so you kind of put those things up on a pedestal and it is they feel more prestigious for that reason sometimes um but yeah third party games are where most of the action's at burrito says here uh here is my weekly mortal Kombat mythologies hot take if it wasn't for the god-awful platforming it would have been a cult favorite it's fmv scenes rule and cheers the mic for being persistent shoot winner about a genuinely tough game yeah, the fighting's not great either. Um, <laughs> there, there is a lot that, like, I do actually kind of like about Mortal Kombat mythologies, oh, yeah. for sure. Uh, and yeah, like, there there could have been a cult favorite game in there. Absolutely, it kind of is this cult game, anyways. And a lot of it is with the baggage of it being terrible, which is a shame. But yeah, uh, I know what you mean, burrito. Those FMV scenes are fantastic they are They're so good so much fun there i mean that dejected sub-zero is gonna live I, in my head for the rest I of my life i can't believe it it's just so <laughs> it's so exactly charlie brown i couldn't like, believe it that had to be like the sixth take and the first you like all right now go downstairs sad and like we said sad he's like i'm wearing a fucking mask what do you want <laughs> look sad so he like angrily right. did the charlie you, brown thing you're, you're like you, perfect mike i think i think you're 100 right that scene yeah. the acting in that scene reads like i am going to overact because i'm pissed at these stupid fucking directors asking me to do this stupid shit so i'm gonna do a cartoon version of being sad and then they were like well now we have to use that so yeah, well, the, these people who know nothing about actually we was like i read an emotion in that that's a good take <laughs> uh Pro 7x13 says, Jeff, big DLC, Daddy Minotti, and Mike D's Nuts Grub. <laughs> Long time listener, first time chatter. Did I do this right? Just wanted to finally share my appreciation and love for all the hard work you two do. Thank you, Pra. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Pra. Really, yep. I appreciate it as well. Mickey O'Leary says, crawling across the floor past all those we lost in the console wars, like Saving Private Ryan's intro this week. But what does this Xbox podcast mean for? Tommy Tellerico. Oh, Tommy's got to be back. He's a ba he's back he's in the back. game. Everybody, it's 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 his time to shine. Um, before we, was this before we went live, Sean? That uh, Amico announced uh, some news today. They announced. Yeah, we talked about that before. What, what? What? It was the name of their mascot. I didn't read no, no, the no. full article, but apparently, yeah, they named their mascot. Uh, Did right. they say the name? I didn't read the fucking article. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a headline. I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. That's incredible. So yeah, uh, right. everything, everything's turning up Tommy. Jeff, I noticed some familiar spelling and punctuation in these next few. From the oh, same let's person. fucking go. From somebody called Leaky Hum 
says, uh, I don't care what you say. Xbox is dead. Next is Starfield Indie. Next one. So many suckers uh, falling for Phil talk. I hate Phil. <laughs> <laughs> last, moving to PC. I hope Phil loses his job. Con man. Well, so, thanks for the I'll money. Tell how you really feel. <laughs> Thank you, Leaky. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's Shigeru Miyamoto. All right. Yeah, Shiki. Shiki says, I'm very happy to introduce our newest Nintendo employee, Tim Nintendo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I will not abandon our gamers, unlike anti gamer Trader Phil. Man, remember last week when I didn't know who Tim Dog was? I do remember. And now you do know. <laughs> and I'm sure you uh, don't regret that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. Uh, I, I don't want to say because I don't want to spot another like thousand <laughs> tweets and like Let's two Twitter spaces <laughs> or something. Oh, Jacob Bench says, Am I the only one that's annoyed that Sony and Microsoft are talking about what's next when it's only been three years? Um, no, it's not yeah, been so three years. Both of them are talking up. It's been a bit more than three years. Both of them right, are yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. kind of next consoles already. What's weird to me, Jeff, is I remember when five years was the standard, and now I'm like, how could, how was that ever possibly the I know. case? Right, <laughs> Why, how were we so ready to move on? I guess mostly for me it was because it was my parents' money. Not that they ever got yeah. me a console on launch day, except for when they got me the N64 on launch day. Mine did, but, you know. Yeah, well, hey, no, no doctors over here. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I did just fine. I was I'm not like I was impoverished or something. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it is... A lot of people are going to agree with this, right? A lot of people are like looking around, being like, "Why are you talking about what's next?" Now, I don't think they would have been like, "We like this week would have said, hey, we have a more powerful console than ever coming,' uh, if they weren't forced to talk about hardware in some way this week." Um, or maybe they were going to talk about this podcast always. But I just don't think so. So, yeah, if they're talking about what's next, that's still probably not, you know, it's several years away, at least two more years away, but probably closer to like three. Uh, El Grug says, I'm going to ask the most important question I've ever asked you guys. I'm going to Sheets. What should I get to eat? Uh, you're going to Sheets and you want to get something to eat? Uh, okay. Uh, the Buffalo Chicken Flat Pizza is pretty decent. It's not like, um, it's like about the oh, size of a it, It's called a Sheets of Pizza when you get it sheets there. Sheets of Pizza. <laughs> get some shings. That's their wings. They like to add Z's to things. Yes. Or, or uh, they add SH's to the beginning of a lot of stuff like uh, Schmegels and stuff. Um. Yeah. Get that. Get that. That's pretty good. Or two plain hot dogs. He's like. He's like getting the meatball sub there. The mac and cheese isn't bad either. Yeah. Their their so, their sub sandwiches are pretty good. The Italian sandwich is really good. Drew Bus says, "Gents, can you please uh, find out why Valve won't officially uh, release the Steam Deck in Australia for me? Been over two years now. Oh, that's weird. I didn't realize they weren't right. releasing the Steam Deck in Australia. Why not? It's got to be logistics. It's got to be logistics and tariffs. Um, I would assume. Or Oceana." Uh, yeah, I mean, let's, I bet it's very expensive to ship that stuff there. They're not going to manufacture it there. That probably takes a while to set up. Um, and then selling that stuff there, they probably would have to set it to a price where it would not make sense to a lot of people. And then if they made it made sense, they wouldn't make any money on it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. That sucks. Australia deserves better. You heard it from Jeff. Uh, Soul Scream says, is the Xbox puck dead? Yes. Well, it's on hold at the very least. They said this. They've confirmed this publicly, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Ando says, why have people only just realized that Xbox had this messaging for years and actions pushing the same direction where people just ignoring the messaging before it has been consistent, in my opinion? So I know Phil said similar things to you before Jeff and other people. Look, this is definitely the most high profile stage that they have delivered this message. And it's been more concrete uh, than it ever has before, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is um, a big, bold step in, in the same direction. You're right, Jordan, uh, that, that this is the kind of very similar to what they've said before. And this is just the biggest step in that direction. But um, it, it also is hard for people to hear that because, yeah, you, they, they say that stuff, but when they go to the store, it's an Xbox and these games are exclusive to Xbox and they keep talking about all the great games that are coming to Xbox. And it's like the reality on the ground for many people, even while he was saying all that stuff is business as usual. So I think people assumed, well, it is this way and it will continue to be that way. And this is the console gaming uh, landscape that we've lived in for our entire lives where it's like these companies do things this way. They do it one way. So now that Microsoft has sort of like been talking about, they are looking at those 3 billion gamers instead of, just the you know the 25 million that they have on xbox um it's like yeah that's a nice thing to say what does that really look like well now we're starting to see a little glimpses of what that looks like 
random thought before we uh leave here for now uh you know we're we're, we're belly aching about rare replay and how that should come to switch somebody pointed out on twitter i forget who so much of rare replay is just like xbox backwards compatibility stuff with 360 so that's a good that point does that's a make good it point. kind of impossible yeah we so weren't really thinking about that were switch, we huh? yeah i guess no. so i mean yeah because you can't really do like a diet version of that that just has all the uh nes yeah, can, and- just yeah, just give me all the yeah, NES, Commodore 64, and N64 games. Uh, that's fine yeah. with me, but they're probably not going to do that. Probably not going to do that. I put put some of those onto uh, NSO then. Yeah, yeah, just do that. One more from Alice Lee. Maybe I'm out of touch, but I don't see why Xbox needs so many first-party exclusives when they have Game Pass, which is enough value on its own. I mean, I, I agree, Alice. And then you look at the numbers, and Game Pass just, it's doing fine, but it's not really growing like it should, and it's probably hit a wall. And again... You know, we're just the way things are. It's not it's not good enough that, hey, we used to not have a Game Pass. And now we have Game Pass and so whatever revenue that is. It's great. No, there's got to be growth. If it's not coming from Game Pass and the growth's going to have to come from somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Alice. I uh, the you, Mike's, Alice. Mike's right. Uh, and it is the kind of thing where we, we talked about this last week when we were like leading into this and we knew this was coming um, that the the. Game Pass is um, attractive, and it's the best deal in gaming. That's the kind of thing people have been saying for a very long time. And I think we're at a point where people are like, well, I got PlayStation Plus, and this is pretty good, too. I don't need Game Pass. Sure, it's got some Xbox exclusives, but I'm fine missing out on most of those. If those exclusives were significantly better, coming out more frequently, impossible to ignore, that is the kind of thing where it's like now it's a differentiating factor again. Um, that's tough to pull off though. And I think Microsoft recognizes that that's what the, all these moves are about, but they, uh, it's going to get an Xbox because of game pass. And if game pass is like, well, we just got a bunch of great third party games in here and all that stuff. It's probably not enough when PlayStation plus is in a lot of ways, just as good. Jordan and has one just now said, so effectively people are just scared of change until it happens. Like people hated day one games to PC at first. Now they want everyone to do it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. People, yeah, people humans, are scared. Yeah, pe- humans are frightened of change. It's uh, we we want the world to work the way we expect it to work. Nothing makes a person happier than when they go into a situation and everything is as they expected it to be. Like if you go into something and people ask you to like, hey, can you do this thing at work? And if the thing is something that you know how to do, it like releases a huge amount of dopamine. People love it. And if it's something you don't recognize, it is very scary. It sets off fight or flight. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing is a lot of fight or flight. I mean, we literally saw people fighting and we saw people flying away from Xbox. So, uh, yeah, that's what we have to deal with when, when these kinds of changes happen. All right. Let's uh, let's end this segment now. If you uh, guys want to send in more Super Chats, we will, re- we, will, uh, yeah. we will read them before the end of the show. Uh, we promise. Thank you all so much. But, yeah, let's take a break. We'll be back. Right, Jeff? That's right. Thanks, Mike, for reading those. Uh, right back after this. Thank you to yeah. all our sponsors. I, I insert joke here. Yeah. Uh, have we? Uh, it is. I guess it is kind of going to be a uh, election year. Have we started getting political ads in our podcast? I don't think we're signed in for those. But sometimes uh, people we're not signed in for them. No, I know, but it's a lot of times okay. people people will um, deliberately anyways. mislabel what their ads are so they can get around wow. that stuff. Oh. Just comebacks. Yes, that's what happens when that's we get evil. Like, yes, so when there's definitely obviously they're marketers. That's illegal. So they're inherently uh, awful and, and evil. All right. We got we got two uh two more segments to do here. Oh, right, let's get into it. Let's get back into it. What are we Stop doing? Stop talking about politics. Huh? <laughs> what what um, are we doing next? We're doing the bop thing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh start streaming it. Yes, I see that. Let Wait, me I, let me get that I, set up real quick. Right. Yes, it does set up. Uh, yeah, this will be a quick one too. Cool. Okay. Hey Jeff, if I was if I was if we were in high school and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna try to I date a teacher," you. uh, you're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what would you would you encourage me because you think that's what a friend should do, or would you uh, maybe explain why it's a bad idea? <laughs> um, is it like a crush sort of thing where i believe the teacher could potentially like have a good conversation with you about like what human relations relationships are really about somehow for a matter of months i am convinced that i am in a relationship with this teacher and that it is progressing to a point where we're oh, gonna no. get married 
Oh, no. Uh, no, I would feel a deep responsibility to get you help. <laughs> I love that Jeff has no idea where this is coming from. Uh, yeah, this has got to be some persona yeah. so bullshit. Uh, that per- yeah, that it persona, is. Yeah, that persona okay. social leak is just wild. It just makes me rethink it's just, the mechanics. It's just, it's just bad. bad. It's bad. It's a game. Why can't... No, it's just a misrepresentation of what friendship is. Like, yeah. friendship is just telling them what they want to hear. That's how you get the most friendship. <laughs> yeah, give me a chance to oh, slap Jesus. this dude and tell him you're delusional. <laughs> Like, get no. off, dude. I'm pretty uh, sure the first you. time I did play the game, I did say the things like, what is wrong with you? What are you talking about? And then it took me forever to finish that social link because of it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, your options are encouragement, I encouragement, or be a dick and nothing changes about it. I think they could do that if it was funny, but it's not funny. It's, it's not annoying. Funny. I hate it. I hate it. It's a fucking loser. Yeah, it, he's a loser. He's annoying. I yeah, hate it yeah, since, true. like, I've been hating it for years. some bad years. social links in that game. I am set yeah. up over here. Let me just Don't do one last some. thing. There Not a go. lot of them, but some of them. Yeah, okay. they're usually pretty good. That is ready. Okay, cool. I'm set up. We're ready to go. I'll bring us back in. Let's go. And we're back, and we got, we're going to get into our best games of 2015 here in a second. And, of course, if you're listening live and you want to have your say on that, feel free to drop a super chat about what you think should be included in that. We'll also read the, our, our input from our podcast producers. Before that, though, I, my understanding is we have an update on our fantasy critic. That is right, Jeff. So uh, we haven't done one of these a little bit, so people may not remember if you're a little newer to the channel. But what we have going on here is that every year we run a fantasy critic league for our patrons, and most of that is headed up by Benji Bop. So, you know, big shouts to him for all that. Uh, If you're unfamiliar with what it is, it's basically like fantasy football or other fantasy sports where you like create a team that you think will do well throughout the year and you want to beat everyone else with your team. So here what the goal is is to have the best scoring games uh review scores of the year and so here we have a little update uh since we have done our draft our initial drafts and a few major releases have come out so uh bot put together a little uh summary of the first month and a month ish of the play here so uh going into it right away uh jeff can i uh borrow your unique skill for a second here with the video that we have lined up uh yeah what do you need uh, just uh, talk about this a little bit, you know? Sure, absolutely. Let me take a, a look here. Okay, yeah, so Beef Spackle off to an early lead. Barf Spackle. Barf Spackle. Uh, <laughs> it's off to an early lead. Actually, it's very hard for me to read these names because it's pretty tiny on my screen. Uh, but Blackheart Vinyl makes a big leap ahead, and then the whole pack catches up. Everyone is moving ahead as Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth comes out. Who's going to get that advantage? Adam, Asleep, uh, uh, Beltred? Yeah, they'll try to uh, in way good rest peak of blue and then Look nick out, turbo nick goes turbo. way out ahead with grand blue fantasy uh and then persona 3 reload helps teshi 1999 catch up and then that leaves adam asleep at beltrad i'm way good re- reset a peak of blue uh yellow beard uh, all tied with, with 20 points then adam asleep catches up with hell divers <gasps> two moving out to the lead, lead. 32.8 That's a points great pick that was a really, yes, that's a very good pick. Uh, all right. Then Banishers comes out, and that moves Low Rule Legend way up into the leaders uh, club. Mario versus Donkey Kong also out. That came out, that comes out like right now, tonight. Right. Ultros is also in there, I believe, which uh, I know is getting some praise. Uh, and so that means our leaders, as it stands right now, is Adam asleep at number one with 32.8 points, Nick Turbo at number two with 31.6 points, and Low Rule Legend in third place with 24.6 points. Um, well, we'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> oh, no. uh, thank, thank you both for uh, commentating over that. Yep. Uh, so here we have some stats from Bob just as a summary of what's happened so far. Noble releases of the period include Tekken 8, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Persona 3 Reload, Helldivers 2, Banishers, Ghost of New Eden, Grand Blue Fantasy, Relink, Go Mecha Ball, Ultros, Turnip Boy Robs a Bank and Mario vs. Donkey Kong Remake. So if you had any of those games in your fantasy league, hey, you got some points on the board. And, and, the, and the, I think you said this, but the order you read that in is the order of the points that they scored. So, yes, top yes. to bottom order I, of most points to I least. Was, that's correct. Yeah, Mike? Look, at 82.8 is a great score. How is Helldivers 2 only an 83-ish average right now? People have bad taste. <laughs> so that's a good score that's a good score it's, overall. A good, it's, it's a the good ones score. that are the ones that are very high up here with tekken 8 at 90 
uh, like a dragon at 90 or 89.9 and persona three at 89.2 those are all incredible scores yes and uh, important to note here though interesting here tekken is an even 90 which means that nobody got the bonus points that happen when you score above 90. So wow, it's, it's not 89.9 you have to score above? Okay, wow. No, you, have, you, have to, you would have to be 91 or more. Interesting. There. Yeah, okay. or, uh, yeah, I guess it would be it would kick in at 90.1. 90.1, okay. Like, yeah, it was probably start doubling any uh, remnants there. But yeah, so that means that the highest score that uh, someone could gain from one game right now is just the standard 20 points. Hey, uh, pretty good production values on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bob puts a lot of work into this. Good really job, appreciate Bob. it here. So here I'm going to go down the line. And I'm just going to show each uh, each league that we have in the greater uh, or what each conference in the league. However, the breakdown is there. It's, it's like tennis game match. So I can't remember which is which. But uh, in the game mess critiques league, we have uh, Adam asleep in first place, as you saw at the end of the leaderboard there. Overall, last of the critique dogs, we have Nick Turbo in first place over there. Closest to the messy critic, we have Low Rule Legend leading the pack. Then Critical Jeopardy, we have Beltrad in first place. And Critique Bros, Teshi, 1999 is taking a league. So uh, if you want to go see where you are, maybe a little more specifically, you can go check out the video version. And I have pulled up all the slides there. The uh, top 10 overall leaderboard is the thing that I want to talk about more so here, which uh, interestingly is a top 11 because of some ties right now. Uh, Epic Open World, Michael Riley, and B Corliss 9 are all tied for ninth place with 19.91 points. Then we have a four way tie for fifth place. Uh, May they just all have the same games there. Uh, Beltrad, Yellowbeard 335, Pika Blue, and I'm Way Gooderus all have 20.04 points. Then fourth place, we have Teshi with uh, the 22.9. Third place is Low Rule Legend with the 24.64. Big jump up there to Nick Turbo with his 31.61. And in first place, currently leading everybody out of the what we have at this point like 80 players or something like, like 80 that players, we have? yeah, yeah. Uh, adam asleep is leading with 32.79 points so very very good stuff there uh mike you asked about where's our names well here's the captain's <laughs> leaderboard where aj minotti benji bop jeffrey grubb mike minotti and myself turbo shot all have zero points because none of us huh. have had any games released yet oh, shit. <laughs> we we all picked games that'll be later in the year because uh I think a lot of us like got stuff like Persona Three and like a dragon sniped out of it. I think we yes, yeah, definitely. I wanted. I got Persona Three in the giant bomb league. I was happy with that, but I wasn't able. Yeah, to yeah. Pick it up. everyone took picked, Final uh, Fantasy right away, and then so like, it was yeah, pretty hard. I, pretty I picked first in my league, so I picked Final Fantasy, and we'll get uh, you know reviews for that in a little bit here. But for now, none of us have any points on the board. What was your first draft pick in this league, Jeff? Mine was the 3D Mario game, so hopefully that comes out. Uh, yeah, I hope that comes. Out. I'm I'm looking at my list right now. Give me a second. I mm -hmm. thought you replicated your giant bomb one a little bit like I did, Jeff, where I thought you got like Mario no, and Metroid. Uh, like no, that. my mine is actually much different now that I I thought really? so, too. Yes, um, I went because there was not much left when it got to me. And so I went with one that I'm like, I'm pretty certain this is going to get around an 85 to maybe even a 90 because it is a particular kind of game. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. So I'm like, yeah, that, that, that could that could they do well for me. They just added the thopter from uh, Dune. Yes, from Dune. Yeah, yes. yes, that's yes, that's in the pretty good. Is that in the so 2024? Movie. That's going to be the. I think that's the last game that has that. So 2024 yes. is a whole new game. Yes, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, that is going to do it for the little quick update that we have here. And I would just like to say, everyone, uh, that if you are interested in this and everything that's going on, the league is currently full, but uh, I talked to Bob about this. We're going to do something a little different this year. Uh, since some people just petered out to the point of not playing last year, inevitably that's going to happen again. Uh, we're not going to immediately kick people, but if we notice that people just you know, aren't really doing anything at all, we are going to reach out to them and say, hey, do you, do you still want your spot? Do you still want to play? And if some people are like, you know what, actually, I'm good, we might be able to get more players in here. So if you're already a patron or, you know, this, uh, this interests you and you want, we're interested in becoming a patron to join, keep an ear out. We'll keep you updated throughout the year. And if that does happen, hey, maybe you can come, come play with us, come join in the league and uh, have a little fun uh, predicting some scores here. I'm trying to see what's available in my league, in my oh, okay, conference, okay. Yeah. make some moves. <laughs> Mm -hmm. all right uh anything else sean nope that'll do it all right awesome let's uh let's you know what the real quick break while i get set up for the next thing we'll be right back after this 2015 
All right, that's this will just take a moment while I just get switched right. over to the other scene. Uh, well, the other asset here. Let's see, there's that. <laughs> asset. <laughs> oh, goodness. Like oh, asset. goodness. Okay. Next, you can start giggling at entities again. <laughs> 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 Immediately. <laughs> Excuse me, something got caught in my throat. <laughs> All right. And then one, two, three. God, four, I, four. I'm sorry, but Jeff's stunt race FX on those hose gaming is just such a good I'm very game. proud of that. Yeah. I like that one a lot. <laughs> what about Rocket Mike Adventures? <laughs> Hilarious. It's you're a also, solid pun. It's you're a also solid very pun. Good, Mike. I'll, I'll get it up. Yeah. Have fun, I guess. Mm. What about Crystal Dynamics, Mike? With a K. Mm, that's the good stuff. Uh, Oh, right, because it's your furry thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm fading in. There we go. Let's bring this back. Give me give me a pause. There we go. And we're back. We're going to talk about the best games of 2015. Uh, we've been doing this for a while now. We started, what year did we start in? Like 1995. 19... Wow, okay, so we have done, uh, is it, that, that would make 30 years of games? What? Is that right? That... Oh, 20 that years. Would, no, that'd be 20. 20 I years, believe. yes, damn, that makes more sense. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, good, good attempt at math. Yeah, math. Yeah, that's why I'm a games journalist, everybody. Um, yeah, so 20 years of games. I mean, so we've done this for 20 different weeks. Uh, we're kind of getting caught up now, but 2015 is where we're at. Mikey, want to explain to people how we do this? Yeah, we've been going through uh, all of the years past and trying to pick uh, the five best games of that year. We are basing this off of U.S release here something that is mattering less and less as we get further along here jeff which is kind of interesting about video games itself um but yeah we, jeff and i are gonna figure this out we're gonna get some input from the community jeff 2015 messes me up because this is the most like i look at these games and to me these are all games that like oh those just came out yeah and it's like oh I'll, that's I'll almost 10 stuff. years ago oh no yes that is um at a certain point I remember this is like a thing I always remember when we start talking about something like that. I talked to one of the people that was like a main guy at Netflix early on. I'm like, what about games? And he's like, once games are old, people don't stop caring about them and no one wants to rent them anymore. And then like a few years later, Witcher 3 came out and I'm like, that's done. That's over. People just will play Witcher 3 forever, it seems like. And guess There's what? not really something hasn't come out where it's like, well, this is like some giant leap ahead of Witcher 3. We finally got other RPGs that matter, like right. Baldur's Gate 3, but it's different than Witcher 3. We didn't just get a nut like that, but obviously with five years of uh, technology on its side. No. Right. And so, yeah, the, there are a lot of games this year that are just like, uh, you. They, these could release today. And I, I mean... God, I mean, the um, PS4 generation started in 2013, right? So, uh, correct, yes. So yeah, so, yeah, we're, like, heavy into, like, just kind of what I do still consider modern-day, like, current-gen gaming, because it's been a very continual thing in going into the PS5 and Xbox Series uh, X and S. Uh, all right, Mike, that said, a lot of really good games came out in 2015. Some very yes. good games. Uh, where do you yes. want to start? Well, you already said it. How about Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That is a very big game. And I, I, I'm always really impressed when, like, a game in a series comes out and yet yeah, totally feels like an, uh, excuse me, entity on its own. Like, Witcher <laughs> 1 and 2's existence, does it even really matter? Because here's Witcher 3. It's going to be a much bigger deal. And it is a ton of fun. It, it kind of is like the successor to Skyrim in some ways of being this big open RPG. And it's different because you are playing as this bespoke character. It's a much more crafted world, but that's sort of the charm of it. It's just how well crafted it is. Every, even like the smallest side quests have unique little storylines and dialogue options and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, you, you kind of said it, right? Like, the, like Witcher 3 sort of is one of the games that changed how games age, really. Yes, I think um, there were different games that were on that spectrum before that. I mean, clearly Skyrim is something that gets released nonstop, but something is even more timeless in terms of design and look and feel with The Witcher 3 than even Skyrim. So, yeah. Um, for me, it's got to be Super Mario Maker. Uh, that's an all-time experience for me in terms of playing a video game where... Uh, I, I I love the tools. Uh, obviously, they're very cool, but really just getting uh, to into a back and forth with someone like where I was the player 
this other person, I think it was a, a Danish or something. I don't honestly barely even know the person, uh, but we were doing, doing the review process and I started playing some of their levels, found them on Twitter and said, Hey, your level, it's a real pain in the ass. And he's like, Oh yeah, well, I guess what? I'm gonna make a couple more for you. And we just kept going back and forth. And it was such a, a, a cool and unique thing. And the game is so good at enabling that. Like at the same time, I like remember like, you know, Dan making levels for Patrick Klepik and how amazing that was to watch. And then, well, you know, watching the giant bomb guys make levels with the community and having so much fun with that. Uh, Super Mario Maker is a very special game for me. Uh, and it's definitely one of the ones that I have like the most fondness for in terms of like, that was a cool thing that happened and maybe could never really happen for me again, but I'm so glad that it, that it did. I never really quite liked Mario Maker as much as you did, Jeff, but I definitely sure. like it. I, I definitely really appreciate it. It is, yeah, it's, it's it's a ton of fun. It's really neat. Undertale actually came out this year, Jeff. Yeah, Undertale's a good game. I like Undertale a lot. I, I feel like it's a game some people are almost sort of sick of hearing about, but it really is super impressive as not just one man, but largely a, a kind of a one-man show. Definitely one person's vision here. So being sort of subvertive of what an RPG means and having that Earthbound influence for sure, but doing something really different with the combat, where the combat is kind of like just the dodging bullets part of a shmup. And then there's all these different twists on that. One of the all time great soundtracks. Uh, it's the little morality system is fun. Something about Undertale that is really unforgettable. The, the, the Sans boss fight is one of my favorite boss fights in any video game ever. You have Megalovania playing during that. Undertale really is pretty incredible. Yeah, I I, uh, I enjoyed Undertale. I played it, beat it. Um, I did not um, get into the like, oh, the pacifist runs and uh, what and like when I was playing the story and kind of like uh, getting into it with the characters and understanding the metaphors of like, yeah, I, I get it. This character is like obsessed in a weird way that is like, oh, clearly that's not how you're supposed to be. And uh, I'm just not someone who really needed those lessons. So it like it was like, yeah, of course, this is this is right. This is like this person having these, this hard time. Um, uh, 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 you know, handling their fandom in a way that is responsible. Like, yeah, don't be that way. Um, it was like, okay, yeah, I, I was not blown away the way some people were, but I appreciate everything that is there. It is a fun game. It's a cool game with cool characters, and the soundtrack is just an all-time great soundtrack. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rocket League, um, one of the oh, best uh, sort of arcade sports games ever made. It is, um, I think it's genre defining in terms of multiplayer online sports games. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that anyone can pick up and immediately understand what they need to do to be, to participate in the fun. And they will begin having that fun immediately. And at the same time, it has enough, enough depth to support the, the incredible esports uh, scene that it does have. Uh, one that is not like necessarily, um, oh, this developer keeps it going because it's part of their marketing campaign. It's like, no, there are people who are just desperately love this and it's a grassroots effort and Rocket League deserves it on, uh, deserves that stuff onto itself because it's earned that and it's just that good. Uh, it's the kind of game that, hey, if someone said, hey, do you want to go play, play Rocket League right now? I would jump in immediately. I would love to play some Rocket League at any moment throughout my life. And, you know, it's... There's kids coming into Rocket League every day still, and they just like that becomes their game. Yeah, man, nine years Rocket League has been going. That's impressive. Yes, it's and it's just sort of maintained that strong uh, support throughout that entire time. Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, Jeff, you know that I absolutely love these yes. Ori games. Uh, you know, I know that the sequel is in a lot of ways kind of the bigger, better one here. That there is still a ton about the first Ori that is incredible. Uh, some really amazing story beats. The game is still just absolutely gorgeous. It's a, as good as a 2D game ever looked. Another fantastic soundtrack. I love those sort of epic sequence, like escape moments. Uh, those are a ton of fun for me. Uh, yeah, gosh, I love Ori. Just just seeing like these pictures in this Wikipedia makes me happy. Yeah, it's... um. It is a very good game. I think I lost a little bit of steam with it near the end, but not enough to like really hold it against it. Um, I think uh, the combat in Ori 2 is such a revelation that it, it is kind of, it recontextualizes like how I felt about Ori and the Blind Forest a little bit. In this, in this game, it is just like, you have a homing attack, you just kind of mash it and it hits the enemies that are near you. And I was fine with it at the time because this yeah. game was so much more about the platforming, but it is better with a combat system in the sequel. And uh, it's a good game. It really is a good game. Yep. Um, I'm gonna do this one first. Fallout Four. 
is a good <laughs> video game. It's a really good video game. Now, I um, understand some of the complaints about it, and I understand the two schools of thought about the complaining about it, where some people do say it's more of the same, and more pe more people are upset that it changed some of the, like the RPG elements. Um, for me, I was very happy to be there for the immersive sim side of things, where it's like, I'm just picking up stuff, and I'm going to go build my base, and I'm going to put that stuff in there, and I'm going to um, build a garage to house all of my power armor, and then I'm going to have a few relationships with a couple of cool people that are cool characters that I really, really like, and we're going to go on some adventures and have a good time, and it's a cool setting. And I, I just There's a lot for me to like about Fallout 4. I really, really did enjoy it, and I knew at the time that I enjoyed it more than most people. Coming out of the review period, I'm like, I really like that, and I heard a lot more reservations from more people, and I'm like, oh, no, I just straight up like it. Um, so it's, it's one that I'm like, I want to consider for this list. We'll see how much of a shot it has. All I want to say is when I was looking at the Wikipedia page for 2015 video games and you like, you see what games won, like the big game of the year awards, which are three won the most somehow fall four won the second most and momentum, I think right? Insane looking at these games that we've been it's, talking it's about. It's a yet. really good year. Yes. It's uh, a very good year. Yeah. There's it's a, fine. yeah, God, there are a couple that are like, obviously, considered more highly than fallout 4 at this point and some that i think should have been at the time for sure like bloodborne like bloodborne yes that's definitely <laughs> like the one i was bloodborne thinking bloodborne came out in 2015 uh man that game's almost 10 years old that's pretty nuts to me yeah uh, like, like aside from the game being like stuck at 30 fps that's basically just how good games look in a lot of ways uh i think it was really neat to take that successful you know, Dark Souls formula we had now and just give it a bit of an aesthetic shake up. Although there's still a lot of, you know, stuff there that's going to remind you of Dark Souls of all the monsters. But I really liked the Knights Victorian vibe of this game. Um, really well crafted world. All the branching paths were fun. A lot of memorable bosses. This was the um, until uh, Eleanor Ring. This was the only one of them I had actually played through and beaten. But I did because it was a very good time. Uh, I love Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, that's a good video game. How do you feel about that one? I also really like Metal Gear Solid 5. I, I am hard on Metal Gear Solid 5 just because its faults are, even though they're all small faults, they're so glaring that they bother, bother me. And they bother me because I know Metal Gear Solid 5 is so close to being one of the best games ever. And then, then these faults, um... You know, like uh, the story just kind of doesn't end because they didn't get to make the last chapter. You get so much of the plot through these audio tapes. You just kind of stay in your base and listen to. But gosh, that gameplay is incredible. That game feels so good to play. Yeah, I think that's the, the thing that really just surprised me. It's like, oh, my God, this is such a next gen idea of what Metal Gear could be when you're actually playing it. Uh, and it's, it's such a satisfying loop. Um yeah, I, I like that game a lot. Uh, so definitely up for consideration for me. Um, is this the year that Bayonetta 2 came out? No, Bayonetta 2 was last year. Was it last year? We didn't put okay. it in, yeah. Right, okay. It just missed the list last year. That's okay. That's yeah. what I was trying to remember. All right, uh, you have anything else, or should we maybe start to get to some of the po uh, the podcast producers? Just one more. Please. Honey Pop. Well, I think we have our number one. There you go. All right, uh, let me get this going. Let me go back here for a second. Three inches of girth? What? <laughs> All right. Um, God, this, is, this actually, be a, this seems like it's going to be a tough year to come down to five. It's going to be a hard year. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I, I, I also don't necessarily think there's an obvious number one for me. Maybe there is for you. I'm not sure. No, not really. No, not really. So. Okay. Well, like I know, I think I know what like your personal number one would be, and maybe what my personal number yeah, one right. would be. Yeah, right. Yeah, like but the obvious know. consensus number one is not occurring to me. Uh, all right. Cranges McBasketball says The Witcher Three Wild Hunt. Um, Queefer Sutherland says Crypt of the Necrodancer. Mike, I knew they were going to start doing this. Uh, where like, hey, they're paying. They're going to make the names weirder and weirder, and that definitely started happening last week. And it's like, all right, here we are. Queefer Sutherland. Which is we're at Queefer Solo and everybody. Keep it classy for the love of God. <laughs> Crypt of the Necrodancer. The mods can change your name, right? If it comes down to that. Yes, so. I, I, I can. Yes, we can. We can. Do that. Uh, the line. Hey, look, the, hey, I, the line. I, I appreciate your creativity, Queefer Sutherland. I, I, I don't I'm going to say that too. They have a stick up their ass. No, 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 no. The line is Queefer Sutherland. If you go on the <laughs> other side of that line, you're wrong. That's good. Queefer Sutherland's fantastic. This far and no further. <laughs> <laughs> the line must be drawn here. 
uh, Mr. Bowler says Splatoon, uh, which, yeah, that's Here. a great game, too. Uh, part of me is like, it just got supplanted by Splatoon 2 and then Splatoon 3. Yeah, I mean, there was something fun about, like, you know, Nintendo doesn't make a lot of big swings of a new franchise very often at all. Uh, so this was coming out and it was on the Wii U and boy, did the Wii U need a shot of something. Uh, so it was almost a shame to suck at the Wii U. So just just Splatoon being on the Switch, this more popular console, did so much for that series. But Splatoon 1 did have a lot of that stuff right away. And it, it also did have like a surprisingly good single player campaign. So there was a lot to really like in Splatoon. From uh, the very beginning. Nintendo from with a super chat says, Don't forget Arkham Knight. Very fun game. Mike, how do you feel about Arkham Knight? I am also a bit of an Arkham Knight defender. I was always a little surprised. Like I, I get the complaints. Uh like, you know, the Arkham Knight character doesn't do a whole ton for me. The story's not the greatest here. I never understood the complaints with the Batmobile. I always thought the Batmobile was really fun in this game. So I don't know. Do you, uh, should I put it on the list? Mm -mm. Okay. No, I don't have to put it on the list, but uh Man, that's so that was uh nine years ago was Rocksteady's last game until Suicide Squad came out this year. And now it's gonna be another yep. nine years until their next game. That's how this works now. <laughs> well, huh? I mean it's gonna be longer because Suicide Squad's gonna just keep going as a live service game and they're gonna have to support that. That's how so. this is, that's how this works now. Oh my god. Uh Low Rule says Ori in the Blind Forest. Uh Chaos Buckaroo says Just Cause Three. That's a, that's a fun one for sure. I still think of Just Cause 2 first. Uh, Definitely. But, like, which one do you go back to if you're just going to play one Just Cause now? Was Is 4 the one where people are like, eh, all right, that's enough of that? I, I, I mean, I think you go back to Just Cause 2. I think that's the one that has the most mod support, I thought, but maybe not. Okay. Um, Bopple, Bop, let's see, Bopfin Rebop says Mad Max. Uh, this is one I kind of just want to play. I have never yeah. really... I, I think I played it a little bit, but I haven't I played actually it at played E3. it. I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah. And it was like that thing where it came out, everyone's like, yeah, it's like, all right. And then uh, like six months later, people were like, no, you all slept on that. That was really yes, good. Yes, exactly. Uh, that was like an immediate sleeper hit. Uh, I think I... Maybe I should make time to play that on the website. That'd be fun. Uh, Mitsurugi says Heroes of the Storm. I did like Heroes of Storm. I like Heroes of the Storm more than I liked any of like the other MOBAs. You can still I mean, play Heroes point, of Storm, right? It's just not... You can. Yeah. It's not really getting new like characters no, or anything definitely now. Not. Yeah. It did simplify it a bit. And you know what? I think MOBAs could use a bit of simplification. <laughs> a lot of times they're too much for me. All right. Um, Nick Turbo says, Until Dawn. Uh, I'm going to play this when it comes to uh, PS5 and PC later this year. I've never played I it. I will maybe watch you play it. How about that? Well, there's, it's got Yay. that, like, it's got the, like, online, like, it, we, we can, like, vote on stuff mode. We could just all play it together. No, fuck democracy. No, it's just, like, go Wait, with what your... What the fuck did you just say, what did you Helldiver? Just say? Uh, hey, oh, hang I on, Jeff. This. Yep. Right democracy. And, unless that's something that they added that I don't know about. That's uh, that's not actually a thing. Uh, it, it's uh, I think it's something they've had in their recent game. So maybe I'm just assuming that they'll put it into this. Okay. Yeah, because the original that game. the original release did not have that. Okay. That's that, that's more funny because then we can just be in a Discord call with you and just yell at you and tell you right that yeah. exactly that works as well. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, Shoji Koto says Bloodborne. Uh, Tommy Pencils <laughs> as a picture of Tamar Hussein looking very stern with a picture a of Bloodborne. Friend. That's your best friend. I said friend. so many nice things about Bloodborne, best friend. Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> uh, Tears of the Boomer Pal 2077 says Rocket League. Uh, yep, very good choice. Lenny Cool Dick Denver. I think this is Xenoblade Chronicles X, if I had to guess. It sure is, which is I, I never got to play it. I assume... Some kind of remaster or remake is going to hit us eventually here. Something about it looks like AI generated, and you know, something about it looks really cool. Um, uh, well, the mech, the mech <laughs> looks really cool, and the flying shit looks cool. Uh, Corley Poo says Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Uh, SWSP says Kerbal Space Program, which actually is one of the best games of that year. I love Kerbal Space Program yes. so much. Watch, watch the Giant Bomb series they did. Yeah, Project uh, Beast, and yeah. Alex Project this is just incredible. It's good stuff. I'm surprised I never got more into Kerbal Space Program. I, I started up a few times and was like, oh, okay, it's neat. I never really got into it. I, I adore that game. Uh, R RBR Timmons says Ori in the Blind Forest. Uh, input name here says Rocket League. Joy Z says Undertale. Jamie H. Christmas Eve says Wolfenstein the Old Blood, which I think is the DLC, right? I never actually played this. I should yeah. give that a shot. Expand alone, maybe. That, Expand that alone. Kind of thing, yeah. That's right. It's pretty good. Okay, I it's give it a pretty shot. good. Uh, Adam Adam GC says Star Wars Battlefront, the first one. 
I did have hey, look. I mean, look, I, I I know that game's shortcomings, but I had fun with Star Wars Battlefront. I did. I, I did too. It's, uh, I I downloaded Star Wars Battlefront two onto my ROG Ally so I could play that every once in a while. How Wait, funny would it be up? if we start if we put these newer Battlefront games on the list when we uh, snubbed those old ones that all the kids like? I don't think that's funny yeah, at all. That's perfectly either. same thing to do. No. What is going on? <laughs> you sounded genuinely distraught asshole. there, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Dirk says Axiom Verge. Uh, I think, um, yeah. look, Axiom Verge is fine. It's good. Uh, I think I think it is uh, overrated. I think it's overrated. It didn't do a whole lot for me when I played through it. Doesn't do a ton for me. Uh, Hammond of Texas says Fallout 4. Uh, Michael Riley says Metal, Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, Fudsack says Rocket League. Uh... This is what AI thinks sexy grub looks like. I was gonna say this looks like an AI version of Rocket League. It's a man uh, wearing with, with with a beard and long hair uh, looking at the camera with Rocket yeah, League you behind him. Like, you look like you're in a commercial for soap or something. Yeah, it definitely looks like a ni shampoo Nivea for men. Um, Super Harmon says Monster Hunter for Ultimate. I was wondering if anyone was gonna that. bring this up. That was a good one. Yeah. The best Monster Hunter after War. Um, Bench JC says Skylanders Superchargers. Is that Donkey Kong? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Donkey Kong I, and uh, I don't remember uh, this. And Bowser were in the Wii U version of this. This was like this had to be one of the last Skylanders. I can't remember exactly, but For we sure. were definitely at the tail end here. Uh, and Jane to Daisy says that. And that what was that you saying about names? What was that saying? I think this is the one of the ones I was like, but made me think of this. Uh, <laughs> that's also the line, everybody. And Jane to Daisy says Super Mario Maker. Uh, Alex says, uh, this, is this Bloodborne? That's gotta be Bloodborne. I think it's Bloodborne. Um, Hosp says StarCraft 2. Lee Legacy of the Void. Legacy of the Void. Thank you. Uh, Korea Freak Eden says, Ali Ali 2, welcome to Hollywood. I, um, can't get into the Ali Ali games. I don't know what it is. Oh, that breaks my heart. I, I, I have, like, no ill will towards them, and I'm glad other people like them. Uh, but I tried for like about two and a half hours to dig Ali Ali World when it came out, and I was just like, "Hmm, this doesn't feel right to me." And then I had to give up. Whoa! Two uh, X Champ Beef Hammer says, "Why?" Uh, I'm gonna read the fucking thing on the screen. Uh, Undertale. <laughs> was, was there are some good lines from Undertale. Yeah, Despite definitely. everything, Jeff, it's still you. Uh, Doomital Crossing says Life is Strange. Uh, you, you ever played any of the Life is Strange games? No, I, I guess. I, Maybe I'm super wrong, but these are very much like those telltale kind of games. This is not my thing. Right. I mean, um, it's it's they, more than that. They but are it, a little sorry, they are a little bit more like involved, like gameplay wise. You you do more. It's more interesting. It's just I'm the, sure. The but games. I, I think I, I would I think you would like Life is Strange more than I would ever recommend you play a telltale game, but uh, I'm, it's also not my thing. So what am I saying? I, but I, I'm sure I wouldn't hate it. It's not high on my priority list of games I haven't played that I want to get to. Always be clothing slash Corgi says Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pain. Uh, uh, there's the famous once you recognize, uh, yeah, the, the ashamed of your words and deeds tweet. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, that's that's <sighs> good stuff. Uh, Sledge Reinhold says Soma. Um, I I think I played a little bit of Soma. Is that the scary robot one? I can't remember. Yes, it is. It rules. Pretty good. I know people it's love from that the, game. Yeah, it's from the the Amnesia people. Uh, Dr. Ryan uh, does Super Mario Maker. Uh, this is a really good stream. Uh, I was yeah, there when they like sort of giant bomb. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the giant bomb stream where they did the police state out of coins. And I think about that all the time. <laughs> police state's just a very <laughs> funny thing to say. Um, Octo says Downwell. Man, that's a good game. Ooh, yes, Downwell's a very good game. Is that? I think that's on Steam, right? As well as mobile. Um, Downwell is like a. A, sh a downward shooter where it's like you're always just shooting down and they like that can like propel your character oh. up but you're also supposed to like go down the well and see how far sure. you can get it's a good game uh matt rare monkey says yakuza 5 i never, I never played it sorry uh isaac clark says timbo the badass elephant it's just so weird to me that the pokemon people made a game with a swear in the title <laughs> yeah uh warden cliff says box boy i, I like Timbo and Box Boy are both ones I hear people bring up all the time. I've never played either one. Is, is there such a thing as a game's aesthetics being too minimalistic? Not for Bo me, Bo but Bo apparently Boy. for you. Box Maybe. Boy is a grub game. It's 100% it grub. It is. Yeah, I guess point. not for it's grub. It's 1 million percent grub. Game. I'm like, look, right. I need a little bit of something than dots on a box. <laughs> I will, like, uh, I'll give it a shot. That sounds like fun. 
Uh, Screaming Madden says Madden 16. Uh, no, but, no, no, no. But, but, says, but in front of, uh, God, what is this? Uh, contradictions. Contradictions. Calling, Thank you. Yes. There. Another another legendary giant bomb uh, Let's Play feature yes. video. Yes, Why are we right. talking about this giant bomb stuff from before I, I was on it? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. You should check it out. Uh, and then Goldie, uh, okay, it's NBA, NBA 2K16 with uh, the ghost game written on top of it. Uh, now I'm just confused, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm also confused. Yeah, it's NBA. Um, Teriyaki Blues, Dying Light, the first one. I actually did, was hoping someone would bring this up. That's a really good game. I like it much more than I like Dying Light 2. Um, it, uh, a big part of it is it like nighttime is like actually night, it's like actually dark out. Um, and I don't know. It just was very scary and also had great parkour stuff at the same time. Uh, JD Camp, uh, is this? That's Metal Gear. Oh, uh, that's Metal Gear. That's, oh, that's right. I just saw the anime character and it threw me off. Um, and then Slane says Witcher 3. Willow Davis says... Amiibo Festival. Amiibo Festival with the smallest picture of the Amiibo Festival icon Incredible. I've ever seen. Uh, Laser Wolf says Witcher 3. Uh, Tekken Wolf 5 says Bloodborne. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike is, is wrong, wrong about, about Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Wait. Look, I was the one who defended. I, I am generally sometimes kind of hard-ish on Bloodborne, but I if there's, like if there's an opinion, I would think I'm wrong about it. It probably is that one. Clink says, Mini Metro. Man, that came out in 2015, nine years ago, huh? Mini Metro's pretty good. Uh, Villain Max says, Metal Gear Solid Five. Cox Traverse says, The Talos Principle. Uh, Zoomer says, Fallout 4 is RPG Game of the Year. Uh, DMC Depress Me Crying says Splatoon. Adam Asleep says, uh, what is this? Oh. Yeah, what is this? Let's see, I'm trying. Oh, this oh. Is, is this Mario and Luigi Dream Team? Yeah, is this Dream Team? This is Dream Team. That was the one that lost me. It was like every screen there was a new, to, like very long tutorial. And it's about a shame because it's like a, it's like a good game with a lot of good stuff in it, but those tutorials Great are a lot. Yes, great concept. And like, there's a lot of great execution. It is just so many tutorials and text that boxes. That would be Paper Jam. Oh, it's just Paper Jam. Jam. It was okay. a giant Luigi. I assumed he was dreaming. The Jesus. game is Paper Jam. They might have picked the wrong GIF. Okay. Well, who knows? They, they, they maybe made too many of those real quickly, by the way, also. Yeah. God, that's right. I don't remember this segment from, and I played Dream Team and not Paper Jam. So maybe this is Paper Jam. I don't know. Uh, Wong Gifts says Trails of Cold Steel. I'm like, is this the one I wanted to play these? Um, because I like Trails in the Sky, but I like that series went 3D with this one, so it's like you go you go from kind of these nice pixel graphics to sort of ugly, cheap 3D graphics, and it just doesn't look nearly as interesting to me. T Money OG says Ori in the Blind Forest. Big Tony says Xenoblade Chronicles X. Uh, like a dig, like a Dylan. Infinite Wealth says Rainbow Six Siege. Oh gosh, Siege! This is the game that was bad and oh then God. became a hit. Became okay, yes, and it's it's huh? very good. I like Siege a ton. I don't I'm know if it's bad. You know, it's it was never it was just slight. I think sure. it was out of the gate. It was just slight, and people weren't quite sure if they were going to be into yeah, it. Or not. Slim. Yeah. yeah, it was slim. Uh, yes. Uh, Vision Forty Nine <laughs> says Bloodborne. Uh, Empanada Eater said WWE Immortals. That's a good poll. That more is that, that this is that Nether Realm mobile game. <laughs> yes, exactly. Where all where all of the uh, wrestlers are actually like superhumans and stuff. It's yeah. it was a, it's a I great can't idea. We didn't just get this as an like a console game. This like, is on console. On. This would this would be a like an all time like uh, uh, oh, yeah. sleeper classic. Uh, Ali Miracle says Honey Pop. There it is. Tink says you must build a boat. This is another one I've never played. I know people love this, but I've I never played. You must build a boat. Um, Cryorsis said, said Heaven's Word, Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, very, 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 very good expansion here yeah. for uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Not not the best expansion. Are you waiting until we get to the best expansion before you try to put it on the list? Yeah, look, I don't think I'm, yeah. I'm not going to like put multiple Final Fantasy fourteen expansions on these lists. To be honest, that's the same. With Shadowbreakers, I, I might make my power. play. <laughs> I would, but you're a coward. So. Uh, Turbo Sean says Mortal Kombat X. Um, even though I, I would say Mortal Kombat 10, you guys would be like, that's not right, even though it's the 10th game. Uh, I, yeah, it's, you're, you're all good. Uh, Mortal Kombat X uh, from, from Turbo Sean wraps it up, though, from the podcast producers. Uh, all right, so let's get back over Mortal to. Mortal Kombat X is uh, very good. Uh, I like it. I just. Um, I, when, I, when I was playing through those, and I think I think X's story, I might be complaining them now. I think I was okay, but none of them are as X good as one. X is the one that's like, I, 
I like it because it's like, hey, we're going to do Mortal Kombat 4's story again. But this time, Johnny Cage's daughter is here. Right. I was yes. Like, okay. I, and I, <laughs> I, I like did it. actually like a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah. I think they, most people think it's the best playing of those. I remember the complaint was that the graphics were real kind of dark, as was the style at the time. Um, like 11 is definitely a better looking game. And so is Mortal Kombat 1. But there's something to the way Mortal Kombat X played that was really good. Muted. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm just going to add Honey Pop, and then we'll go from there. So uh, Thank you. Um, you absolutely. didn't add Honey Pop already? I brought yeah, it up. Yeah, it was um, a failure of me as your friend. I'm sorry. I hate it. Yeah, I agree. All right. We have five slots. We have more than yeah, that. Yeah, way more than that in Honey Pop. Uh, way more than that in terms of games. Uh, Mike, where do we start here? Actually, you know what? Here's what we have. Witcher 3, Super Mario Maker, Undertale, Rocket League, Ori in the Blind Forest, Fallout 4, Bloodborne, Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, and Honey Pop. Here's where I want to start. I don't want Fallout Four on this fucking list. <laughs> Wait, I, I I refuse to believe that you were to play this game today that you would actually hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. You just don't want to reward it. Time. It's a, yeah, I don't want to reward it for kind of making the series worse. Yeah, um, no, I get it. Like it's still a fun game. All that base building stuff is so much unnecessary fluff that has nothing to do with anything. If you if it's fun building a base, fine. Can't believe they just brought it back in Starfield and it is somehow still just disconnected from like every other system in the game. It's like kind of worse in Starfield, yeah. It, it's even worse in Starfield. It's maddening. Um, yeah, like look, like so much of the fun of Fallout for me is sort of that RPG stuff, like, oh, like, you know, I'm gonna talk to this person and because I have this trait, this conversation's gonna happen. And there's just a lot less of that here i think that they kind of try hearted with the story in a way that i didn't really uh enjoy not that the story was amazing in fallout 3 necessarily either there was not that many memorable characters piper was fine i did like valentine it's not it's clearly not a terrible game there were some good side quests that one where you become like that pulp superhero thing was fine um but i don't know i think that the trend of uh bethesda maybe slipping a bit definitely starts here for me yeah, I um, I, I think a lot of the changes it made were uh, uh, some of them are bad, but for the most part, I'm like, I'm fine with this. They're trying different things, and it worked for me. Uh, if you begin to put it on a timeline and look at the trends, I see what you're saying. I know, I know exactly what you mean, and I think you're also probably right. But look, it's, it's it's definitely not a bad game. It's a good game. It's not one of the five best games of this very good year. Yeah, I mean, for me, I might squeak in at five, but even for me, it's like a question mark there. Um. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I am. This is gonna be hard because I see a lot of games that I think one of us really likes and the other one is maybe okay with. Yeah. Listen, I'm not. I'm like, I've tried Witcher three a bunch of times. I just don't think that game's very fun. Really? Yeah. Really. Because like I was about to say, man, I don't know if we can not have Witcher three on the list. But you really, yeah. I, that's right. You don't like Witcher three. I forgot. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't have to be on the list. I just don't think it's fun to play. Yeah, that fun. Yeah, the, like the combat and the magic and your pairing. I, I like the using... idea of like getting like understanding like, OK, well, we're going after this thing. I'm going to need to prepare all this stuff and go out there and do that. I think that stuff's pretty neat. But then I go and do it. I'm just I, I don't know. I, I just don't so have fun playing me... it. I don't hate it. I, and I don't think other people should like uh, uh, subscribe to my opinion on it because people are finding fun that I'm just not. And I'm OK with that. It's just Look, not it's our me. list. It's our list, Jeff. But, yeah. so, but you don't want it on the list. I'm not saying that. I just I don't I I don't I don't want it at number one if we can avoid it. No. Oh, oh hey, if you if you say you straight up don't think it's fun, I'm not gonna push for number one. Right. No, that's fine. Um, okay. well, then what can be number one? Here? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I tell you like, what. For me, Rocket League is actually probably number one. I mean, you're wrong though. That face is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like rocket league i don't know i don't want to be some snob <laughs> who's like that's just not enough of a video game for me of course i don't feel like that i i like rocket league i played like <laughs> i played trying like, to convince here i don't know i like rocket league yeah it's neat soccer both cars that's cool <laughs> why do you have what to say the... it like that <laughs> <laughs> number one that's what you were gonna go yes uh, it's fantastic it was great then it's still great today it yes it's a very good game i was yeah and like i was prepared for you to try to get on the list and i was gonna be ready for that i just didn't think you're immediately gonna go number it, one i mean listen and, uh, but well 
I do think, uh, like, uh, Super Mario Maker would probably would be my real number one. I just think Rocket League... That's what League... I thought you were going to say, and I well, thought yeah. I was going to talk you down from that one. I was ready for that. Right. Ro Rocket League is just such a um, uh, a simple game to get into, and it's everyone likes it. Everyone ha can have a good time with it, and uh, and it holds up for a reason. So, I, I don't know. It, to me, like, okay. that's, like, kind of a default number one, but we don't have to actually do that. I'm, listen, I'm fine with Bloodborne. I played a lot of Bloodborne. We won't put that at number I like one. A lot. I'm down with that, but I don't know if you actually want to put it at number one. Maybe not. I don't know. We both like Metal Gear Solid Five, don't we? Oh, let's put Metal Gear Solid Five at number one. Yeah. Why, don't we, why don't we do that for yeah. now? All right. Cool. Like then, Bloodborne at two, maybe actually. That's fine. All right. Uh, then Rocket League at three, and then Super Mario Maker at four. All right. Look, if you get those two, then I want Undertale. Oh, that's I like Undertale. I want Undertale at three. I don't know about that. You're getting two of yours. Listen, I don't like Bloodborne that much. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tell that to town. How about we move Nobody Bloodborne down town. and move everything else up, and I'll, then I'll move Undertale to three. Let <laughs> me right, so see what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Uh, Listen, I don't know if I want to do this. I was being pretty uh, hasty there. Um, <laughs> I just love how quickly you threw a blood board onto the train tracks for that Come on, There we go. Uh, well, no, that's not exactly right either. Um, okay, Undertale at three. Yeah, and, Undertale. And then maybe, okay, actually, now that I look at it like this, I'm like, okay, Super Mario Maker at, at two, and then Rocket League. I, I, I really think Bloodborne should be above Rocket League. All right, yeah, all right. I mean, it's not better. <laughs> My but... God, this is an abusive relationship, and you need to realize that, Chef. Hey, I mean, I, I, listen, I, I've got Super Mario Maker up at two. Like, what? Well, I'm taking what I can get here. Oh look, I didn't even bring up Ori, because uh, look, my push is really coming when the sequel for that yeah, oh, is yeah, out. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, then I'll be pushing. That's probably my thing with Ori and the Blind Forest. It's funny how something could just be like one of your favorite games ever, then the sequel comes out, it's like, no, that one is now. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, totally, yes. It's kind of like that. Mm, Wait, okay. oh, Honey Pop, shit! <laughs> oh, well, I guess we'll get it. Honey Pop 2, we'll get that one All right, on let's, there. let's reassess Fallout 4. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, is this our list, Mike? I can't tell anymore. It actually looks like a good list when it's I'm pretty looking good, at yeah. it. It's pretty good, yeah. All right. I like it. So number one, Metal Gear Solid Five, then Super Mario Maker, Undertale, Bloodborne. Number five is Rocket League. All right. We're going to get a lot of people yelling at us, I think, but what can you do? Well, yeah, because they're going to be like, Rocket League should definitely be above Bloodborne. <laughs> 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 gonna I don't know why that whole thing Rocket was just, you just threw so many curveballs at me on that one Jeff, that I was, <laughs> was not I was trying to keep for. you on your toes a little bit there yeah. like, <laughs> alright so Rocket League at number one all right? Right, start with, hey, Rocket League is easily could be good. number one on this list you, you are legit just wrong about that let's be clear <laughs> like you are just wrong I don't know Can I, I, I do can, know I, I, I can't run a poll anymore. Someone on a poll is should is Rocket League number one. Well, okay, see. you don't have to say it like that. But <laughs> is Rocket League the best game of 2015, <laughs> everybody? Oh, uh, okay. Why well, why can't you guys run polls anymore? Let's see. Here. I don't know. I never was able to run polls. I, anymore. I don't know how this works. I don't know how them. polls work on YouTube. I can do them on GiantBob.com, right, but not here. Go do a poll in that chat. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, we'll go over there. Uh. Jeff, do you want to? Do you want me to read these out for you? Or, yeah, read them. Uh, read them one more time for everybody. Best games of 2015: Number five, Rocket League. Number four, Bloodborne. Number three, Undertale. Number two, Super Mario Maker. And then number one, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Which again, a game size has like these these small glaring faults that really bother me, but overall, just a fantastic game. There you go. All right. Uh, one more quick break. We're going to get back. We're going to talk about what we've been playing and then get out of here, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Is it break? You want to do it in and out? <laughs> okay, that's, uh, okay, that's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, higher or I, th I, I thought that was good middle ground. Yeah, way that's put, good. I'm, I'm okay with yeah. that. No, no, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I didn't put lower on the list. Yeah, lower was <laughs> it's not my fault that people have bad taste. Yeah, that's just wrong. Rules. Rocket League is uh, great. There's, 
man, that shows me everything. Like, not, not in a bad way, but it tells you everything you know, know about Jeff Grubb. He's like, yeah, I don't get it with The Witcher 3. Also, Rocket League was well, the best here, game Rocket right League here. is fun and feels good. <laughs> I get it, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. I like, get yeah, if, if Witcher 3 felt anywhere near as good to play as Rocket League does, then <laughs> it would be fucking cooking. If it was a car RPG... If it's just like know, Rocket, if, if moving Rocket the thing around that you move around was what, fun what are, to like, what are we doing here, Jeff? What are you talking about? Uh, Rocket League is I mean, fun to play. And Witcher yeah, Three is not. Did, but there's fucking in Witcher Three. Oh, okay. people well, like Witcher Three. Yeah, but you can like, kind of put the cars on top of one another. Okay, listen, we don't need to know. Especially what do you, it does you don't do them with, right? with those hands. Hey, are, is what a, do you have to do that with your hands? Sean, is, no. is, is, is uh, Miss Mitsuru yes. from Persona Three? Yeah. Yes. And Yennefer from Witcher Three. Is that the same character? Um, um, I mean, Jennifer yeah. sucks though, so uh, yeah, she's gonna kind of sucks. Kind of sucks uh, Whoa. In, a way that I like, in a way that I like, yeah. but she kind of mm. sucks. We're what do you mean? Well, mm, I don't know. All I right, know. let's get on with this podcast. Let's just get this, just, just, just end this, and we're back. Uh, let's talk about what, we, what we've been playing. Uh, Mike, I've been spending some time with Bellatro. Uh, uh, mostly with the demo version, I can't. I actually don't. I should check the embargo. But I played so much of the uh, demo version. That's what I'm speaking about here. Um, a game rules. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's got a lot of cool ideas. This is the poker deck building game that we've been talking about over on Giant Bomb. I think I might have talked a little bit about it on um, one of these shows. Uh, it continues to be really fantastic. It's the kind of game that will swallow up my life. So I am like, yeah, I need to just put that aside until I have a little bit more time or get through some of these bigger games. Um, other than that, uh, it's been it continues to be like a dragon, infinite wealth, and then uh, some review games. Um, but like a dragon, Rocket League, here's the poll is it fine as is on the list, or does should it be higher? Uh, fine as is one with 65% higher with only 34%. Sorry, Jeff, no, wrong. Hey, I, I like that card game also. I got to play it, <laughs> I enjoy it, I want to play more of it. It's uh, I, I also like poker. A good deal. So yes. doing a roguelike poker game, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I there's a history of, like, poker uh, getting video gamified in a bunch of different ways. Uh, ways. Uh, poker Smash was, like, an early Xbox Live arcade game that I really liked. Right. It was, like, a Act, like an active puzzle game and that one was really really good and i think i think it's still backward compatible on xbox i think you could still play it um and it's like I mean, yeah we haven't had one of those in a long time so someone kind of bringing this along and they're actually being really well designed really well thought out i really really enjoy it um but then yeah like a dragon i keep i'm keeping my, my momentum going with that i'm getting out of this recent uh kiryu in japan chapter which has a lot of like what i can tell is nostalgia for people who have been longtime fans of the series sure. and that it's like Feels like a proper sort of passing of the torch uh, is what a lot of people are explaining to me. And I can tell like just by playing, it's like, yeah, that seems like there's a lot of stuff. Where it's like, remember this, remember this, remember this. Here's this little thing like tied up in a nice, neat bow that is probably very emotional for people who experienced this originally. And for even for me, I'm like, this is really well done. So just uh, overall continues to be a really, really great game. They had compared it to like um, that Shadow Moses chapter Metal Gear Solid 4, and I immediately understood what he meant with that. Yeah. Um, how about it, you, Mike? What do you what have you been playing? Well, real quick, you know what? 2015 game we didn't mention at all. It's a little messed up to me because that was a good game. It mm. seems like everybody forgot about it. Is Shadow of, or Rise of the Tomb Raider? Excuse me, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh, that's yeah, that's the Tomb Raider one that I, that I really like. Best was, of that trilogy. Yeah, it's the best of that trilogy, I and mean, it's the, probably the best Tomb Raider game. It's all snowy, and I like the yeah the tombs were fantastic. So just a shout out to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yes, I definitely agreed. It. Yeah, we should we should have at least I, mentioned I would have put it above Rocket League, but I don't think Jeff would have gone for it. Well, fuck no, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have, I have, I still play Tekken Eight. I still try to play at least a little bit every day, just climbing the ladder there. And you know, like I am climbing still, which is fun. That's it's great. Like, it's yeah, it's like slowish, and I don't play a ton every day. But like you know, like the the ranks are kind of color coded, and I'm in the orange area right now, trying to get to the red. If I got to the red, I think I'd feel pretty good about myself. I don't know much higher than that. I am ever going to get, but it is fun. Like I am at this point where this character I'm playing as Reyna, I, at any moment, I know all these different moves I could do. And I'm also at this point now where I know a lot of the other characters well enough that I can do things like, okay, I know in this combo, I could maybe duck and do a low attack here. And that can be a launcher and I can play off of that. So, you know, that's always everything with fighting games is it does reward you for the more you play and the more you pay attention, the further your expertise is, even though 
if you just wanted to play Tekken 8 as this kind of I'm going to goof around by myself, play the story mode, play that arcade quest, just f get all these characters endings. That alone would be worth the price of admission. But I am glad that this latter experience is really good. My connections have generally been very good. So I am really enjoying playing Tekken like that. Are we officially in the era of fighting games work online well enough that it's a great way to play those games? We'll, yes. we'll find out. I'm boy, am I curious what the next Smash Brothers is gonna feel like online? Well, accepting uh, that, yes. God, can I, can you imagine how happy I'd be if there was just like a don't don't please don't say anything, people. But like if there was a no like a no item, just one v one like like ladder ranked mode in Smash Brothers. I know I sound like an idiot. Of course, <laughs> there is, Mike. Happen. There is an ultimate. Yeah, uh, no, you know what I mean, but like. What? No, good. I don't. Well, but good there's the, the mode to play that is in ultimate, but is it a ladder well, mode? Yeah, not something something yeah, a bit smash something power. a bit more streamlined than four glory or whatever it was called. Then I don't I know. Focus. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, You're you not should be begging for good netco for that game for the next. That's what I mean more than anything. Than yeah. Um. Yeah. Really like Tekken Eight. Um. Otherwise, I've been playing Persona Three still, and yeah, obviously, I've been really, really enjoying that. I'm. Uh, I got Fuka, who's the character who I said, uh, who, who's, whose voice upset me, the original Persona 3, and her voice, I think, is much better in this one, so I actually like this character now, so that's okay. nice. Yeah, yeah, so that makes me happy. Hell Diving? Hell Divers 2 is so much fun, Jeff. I've had, I had so much fun playing, I played it with you with the Giant Ball people, and then with my brothers. What an incredible game. Yep, it rules. I am, uh, I probably will spend some time this weekend solo queuing in that, just to see what that's like. I've heard good things. Uh, so I'm looking forward yeah. to and I'm I'm not going to use a mic unless I end up with like a, and a one with one, uh, a friend, which my understanding is a likely possibility if other people are playing online that you're friends with. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to go in there and we'll try to stick together as best right. I can and, and an emote and point at things and, and just mark them and then just kind of do, do my best to contribute. I'm playing I, I tomorrow mean, with uh, some fire escape people, actually. I, I assume that's not a secret, but yeah, Dan asked me if I could play with oh. them. Dan mentioned that you guys were going to be doing some stuff together. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, that's I, good. I, I've been playing with randos all the time now, and it's been working fine for me. Some people use their their mic, and some people don't. They just use the marking, and right. you know, it's like in world, so it, it works really fine. And the connections have been good. When you connect, sometimes you have to like reconnect a couple of times, but it's been working like flawlessly since they patch it so yeah really happy with that but that game it just continues to be like yeah i mean it's so hell divers one uh and yet it's so much more or it's, so it's just, it, or it's just it's just hitting so much more in a lot of ways and obviously a big part of that is the way the perspective works and how they handle the visuals so the so you really feel like you're in it that much more obviously and that's really important but um i don't know i just really like that that game is finding an audience and that we all kind of agree that it is an amazing thing. And I, you know, really their website says it like that a game for everybody is a game for no one. Um, this is a game for people who want this kind of thing and they just go that far in that direction or as far in that direction as they possibly can. Every choice is in service of, does it make it feel more dangerous? Does it make it feel like everything matters? And it's like, yes, then that's what we're doing. Uh, so yeah, huge fan of Hell Divers too. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's a success and glad that studio is like, hey, we are hiring up so that we can do even more with Helldivers 2. I hope it's a, a long running success. All right, uh, Mike, super chats. I think there's a handful more. Why don't you read those and then we'll get out of here. Yeah, let me see if I can catch up here. Da, da, da. Uh, chance to change. Don't forget Arkham Knight. Green Thumbs was just, uh, I don't think there's any text in this one. There was no message you, there, but thank you, Green Thumbs. El Grug says, put uh grow home above bloodborne for tam i never played grow home grow, home's grow good. home person yeah i like grow home a lot zubmer says nora is a better protagonist than uh Geralt. is nora from life is strange is it something else i don't know it's nora from i don't think nora's from life is strange i think it's nora from no it's definitely not from the is nora strange. from honey pop i don't think so i think i remember their names nora <laughs> video game character let's see uh, Somehow this is going to be a oh fallout. Oh, oh fallout. Okay, sure. Yes, yeah, so I disagree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rogers OG says Jeff, for the love of God, you need to play Box Boy. I think that's the game I was complaining about. Uh, that yeah, was, that was just, it, like, yes, it was. Yeah, and you're like, is, 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 is there such thing as too minimalist? And then you started going on a rant. And we all just ignored you. 
Yeah. No, that was a good rant. I was making a good point. Uh, no, everyone's Rogers. like, we love this game. And you're just like, there's not enough graphics. Look, I'm sure it's fine. But I mean, look, I, I, a little, I can use a little something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Rogers OG says, Jeff, for the love of God, you need to play. Oh, that, that's the one I just read Remix. about box play again. Yeah. Look, like, even if a game looks like an Atari game, that would be more aesthetically interesting to me than literally just, like, lines. Uh, maybe, maybe it animates really well. You don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. Alex O'Leary says, found out what the Xbox podcast means for Tommy Tallarico. Just not his name. Give, it's give him $10. Uh, you said Alex O'Leary? <laughs> That's just not... Is he Alex? What are you I talking about? I think you about? said Alex. <laughs> well, I don't have my glasses on. I, Mikey O'Leary writes it, like, every episode. How can I say his name wrong? What's wrong with me? You got me all hot. <laughs> oh shoot hot everybody stand back he's, he's mad about box boy wait 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 i think you said mike <laughs> i thought he said alex o'leary maybe maybe i misunderstood <laughs> stand back everyone he's mad about box boy. <laughs> uh mikey o'leary says found out what the xbox podcast means for tommy tallarico his san juan capistrano homes up for sale three million and it is truly garish this is real well, not the Xbox. Podcast, <laughs> Jeff, imagine if we bought Tommy Tallarico's home. All right, everybody. Uh, let's get the GoFundMe going. God. Oh, my God. Uh, we could, like, run tours and stuff. The Tommy Tallarico experience to get to pay for I'll, it. I'll, I'll say, hey, I'll give you your asking price in cash if I can keep the Guinness. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, leave them on the wall. Oh, man. Is it house from Cribs? Uh, he, was he was never on Cribs. He was never actually on Cribs. twice. <laughs> He was never he was actually on his, any real Cribs episode. Man, that's incredible. He just lies about being on fucking Cribs. <laughs> it's like, and it was like, it was like some video game it's show, like, right? It, I, I mean, there, were, there are a lot of people of like, from like that generation, I think who were so into hustle culture that it was like, well, of course you like, you, you exaggerate and you know, they don't think it's lying. Well, you exaggerate because you got to really promote yourself. And uh, then the internet happened, and we can actually just document yeah, all the lies, right, right. and now they all look Oh, you said stupid. this on TV, and it's just not true. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, um, yeah, that's yeah. it, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for the Super Chats. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope Tommy saved his money. I think he's going to need it. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you for watching, Mike. St thanks for reading the Super Chats. Uh, mods, thank you for your help tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Should we get out of here, Mike? Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, I'm going to hit the button. Uh, long weekend. Looking forward to it. That's going to yeah. be nice. It's going to be nice. Got uh, some fun stuff happening on uh, on the Giant Bomb tomorrow. It'll be a good time. We'll play some stuff on UPF. Got a lot of stuff planned for that. Uh, might do a little bit of a kind of a longer one. Um, and then we'll have a, a, a Bombcast Revengeance. We'll do some fun stuff on there. I'll bring some games to talk about probably. And we're going to do, is this character more or less famous than Cloud Strife? So gonna have some fun with that uh other than playing games you're gonna like get out there i know you had you sound like you had a pretty social butterfly weekend last weekend are you gonna kind of yeah. take it easy this one this weekend I, i'm trying to think i don't think i have any i think there's one person who wants to go out and like i'll do that i don't want to though i've been very yeah i've had a lot of very social weekends uh i need to play a video game this weekend is what i want to do yeah for real um has anybody else ever triggered their own eye watches being like too loud thing just by talking? Is that how loud and obnoxious a person <laughs> I am? <laughs> Sounds like you're in a loud environment. You should exit and save yourself. <laughs> like, that's me. me. I can't leave myself. Just from me talking loudly, my phone's like, ah, oh, you're going to hurt your ears if you stay in this room. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, hell yeah. That's incredible. Uh, no, I can't say that's ever happened to me. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I used to be so quiet and meek, Jeff. You didn't uh -huh. meet that version of me, but no, that was I a never version saw of me. that person. Um, I'm also going to be spending this weekend playing a lot of video games. I'll clean up around the house a little bit. Looking forward to doing do that. that. I haven't had much time for that, but uh, yeah, God, I I hope I could beat Like a Dragon. It, it is still just such a fun game to play. I think I will, but I really want to spend more time with some of these review games. So we'll see. Um, I, you going to pick up Mario versus Donkey Kong tonight? No, no. No, I'm gonna keep playing for stuff. No, I just—it's so funny how much we love Donkey Kong '94, and then I see Marvis's Donkey Kong, I'm like repulsed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably pick it up. I might wait and see if Nintendo sends the codes. We'll see. Uh, usually, uh, I don't these days for Nintendo games. This one, I might wait and see. I'm having so much fun for Sony. I'm gonna play that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>
He's shoot hot about Box Boy. <laughs> Is Dana I'm such a anything, stupid Bob? asshole. <laughs> I'm such a stupid asshole. He can feel want it. The fuck off. <laughs> we all we all want it. <laughs>